The first, it was Babe Laufenberg at the start. Mark Vlasic underwent knee surgery two days ago. He's gone for the rest of the year. That leaves it to Mark Malone, but the thing they like here in San Diego is the defense. Well, Greg, they're making a lot of noise on defense. They're really playing for respectability, but their down linemen have been putting a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Their secondary is playing good, playing with an awful lot of enthusiasm, which makes up for our ability sometimes. Now, the 49ers come in here with the third best offense overall in the National Football League. You talk to head coach Bill Walsh, he says things can be better. Well, the way you make it better is you keep your people healthy. Jerry Rice bothered by an ankle. Joe Montana banged up all year. If San Diego doesn't get pressure on Montana, they let him get in the rhythm. Could be a long day. Both these teams come off of big offensive explosions last week. The Chargers, winners over the Rams. While the 49ers beat Washington Monday night, San Diego has won the toss. Mike Kofer kicks it away. And here come the Chargers. Jamie Holland, number 86, to the 25 and close to the 30-yard line. And that's where the Chargers will put it in play. Number 55, Jim Fanhorst, making the tackle. And onto the field comes Mark Malone, the former Pittsburgh Steeler, who was 4 of 6 for 128 yards. And here's the defense he'll look at. San Francisco, Larry Roberts, Michael Carter, and Kevin Fagan on the front line. The linebackers, Charles Haley, Ricky Ellison, Michael Walter, and Romanowski, the rookie, in for the injured Keena Turner. The secondary, a good one. Tim McKayer and Eric Wright on the corners. Ronnie Lott and Jeff Fuller at safety. First down, San Diego from the 29. Malone fakes the pitch and throws to the inside. side. Bernstein, and Bernstein out to the 40, and that'll be enough for a first down for the Chargers. Let's check the San Diego offense. Malone is joined by Bernstein and Gary Anderson. Rookie Anthony Miller and Jamie Holland on the wide receiver positions, and Arthur Cox at tight end. The offensive line, Dallafor, Thompson, Rosado, McKnight, and David Richards. 11-yard pickup on the first play from scrimmage and from the 41. With two wide receivers flanked to the right, Malone back to work. This time he does pitch. Anderson reverses field and Malone blocking for him. Midfield, 45, inside the 45 to the 43. Ronnie Lott making the tackle, and on two plays, the Chargers come up with two big gainers. Well, that's the guy we need to keep an eye on right there is Gary Anderson, number 40. Talk to Jerry Rome, their offensive coordinator. They're going to feature him an awful lot, whether it's something like this, pitch the ball, take advantage of his outside speed, let him cut, use his athletic ability, or whether they're trying to isolate him on the linebacker. But look for Gary Anderson to play a big part offensively today, Greg. Down to the 43-yard line, another first down. Two plays, two first downs for San Diego. Ball to the near side. Anderson out of the backfield. Hit as soon as he catches the ball at about the 40. Eric Wright, number 21, coming up to make the tackle after a pickup of three. Well, as we said, he's going to do an awful lot catching the ball, running the ball. In their running game, let's look for San Diego to run the ball outside. They think that they will have problems in the interior line with handling Michael Carter, their great nose guard. So their, their running game is going to be basically outside and throwing underneath uh, San Francisco zones. Al Saunders, now in his second season as head coach of San Diego. Holland and Miller, wide receivers, flying to the top of your screen. On second and seven. Anderson. To the 35. Pick up of five. Ricky Ellison on the stop, number 50. Well, if they can get enough running and get some good first down plays and keep their defense out of any kind of rhythm, don't get in predictable situations, the obvious third and long passing downs where they can tee off, bring in the situation, substitution people. And San Diego has a talented team playing with an awful lot of emotion. Fourth quarter score, Philadelphia by three over Phoenix. And you see the rest on the CBS Sports Wire. On third and two, six defensive backs in for the 49ers. And out of the shotgun, the handball. And straight ahead is 26 Lionel James. First down yardage and more to about the 25. Nice call, nice call. They come out in this red tight formation, a passing tight formation. Hit the draw up in there for the first down. That's the thing that we were talking about, is to be able to keep San Francisco off balance with plays they don't expect. Like this, out of a passing formation, a little quick hitting draw to a real quick little back line, L. James. Nice call. Number 95, Michael Carter, the best nose tackle in football, is the man that the Chargers will have to control if they hope to continue to run the ball that well today. No doubt. 
First down, Chargers at the 24. Along the throw. Here's that complete Jamie Holland that knocked out of bounds inside the 20. Tim McHire, number 22. With the hit. Nice read. Nice read by Mark Malone. Just take that. Take that five or six yards and create those second and short. So second and five, second and six. You see, he takes a look inside. A lot of people on the inside. Just take that right there. Create second and five. Now they're really on offense, and they're keeping the San Francisco defense off balance. No matter how you feel about Mark Malone's career as a quarterback to date, he is 2-0 and oh when starting against the 49ers. Second and four after the pickup of six. This is Anderson. Anderson losing the football. And the 49ers recover. Anderson. 42, Ronnie Lott, the man on the spot for the 49ers. Well, there's the H-back. You see number 82. You see Rod Bernstein come in. He's going to cut off of his block right there. There's the block. He cuts in behind him, and Larry Roberts, number 91, gets the hit, gets his hand on the ball, and there's a guy, Ronnie Lott, who's made a career out of being around the football. And so after a fine, sustained, big play filled drive by the Chargers, they turn it over. Montana fakes the give up the middle. Inside and incomplete, intended for 85, Mike Wilson. Vincey Glenn with the big hit. Joe Montana, the quarterback. Here's the defense he looks at as the Chargers start out in a 4-3. Sack man, Lee Williams, Mike Charles, Joe Phillips, and Leslie O'Neill up front. The linebackers, Keith Browner, Gary Plummer, Cedric Figaro. Billy Ray Smith out with the broken leg. The safety, Burr and Seal on the corners. Glenn and Pat Miller at the safeties. Montana under the rush and goes down. 93, Tyrone Keyes was in on him in a hurry. Well, that's what happens when you get in predictable situations. An obvious passing down was second and 10, and they bring in those people that really put the heat on the passer. Tyrone Keyes, number 93. One thing we should look for, Greg, is if Montana's not able to use those quick feet, avoid the rush, dump the ball off to the backs, that's one of the things that Bill Walsh will look at to see how well he's doing. Third sack of the year for Tyrone Key. Third and 17 for Montana. Rolling away from the pressure and downfield and out of bounds. Jerry Rice near the football. And the Charger defense will give the ball back to the offense. Good defensive series by San Diego. Applying pressure to Montana. If you're going to stop this offense, that's what you have to do is put the heat on Joe Montana. Don't let him get in the rhythm of throwing those little short passes, controlling the football on you. Barry Helton. Ready to kick it away for the 49ers. And Lionel James, number 26, ready with a fair catch. Inside the 50. So with nine minutes, 55 seconds to play, the Chargers go back to work and with excellent field position. 37-yard kick by Helton. And Al Saunders congratulating his Chargers on the sideline. Kind of fun talking to him yesterday and uh, asking him about this offensive team. He says, well, when you don't have the Dan Fouts and you don't have the great receivers, the Kellen Winslow's, the good offensive line, you're going to struggle on defense. People here are used to seeing yards rolled up, points scored by the Fouts regime. Uh, it's not the same. Speaking of Dan Fouts, we honored halftime. It's Dan Fouts Day here in San Diego today. What a player. Spencer in motion. And Malone will pitch to Anderson. Looking to get outside. Can't. Comes back the other way. Escapes one tackler. And he's going to lose some yardage. Lost the ball after the whistle. 53, Bill Romanowski, the man who finally collared Gary Anderson. A loss of nine on the play. Well, they have nothing to lose, and they try to make something happen on offense, and of course, that's what Anderson's trying to do, is make something happen, but might be advised just to take your loss, dive to the line of scrimmage, take your two-yard loss, and, and try to stay out of these predictable situations as we talked about earlier. So on second and 19 now, the 49ers expecting San Diego to go to the air, comes on with two extra defensive backs, 38 Greg Cox, 46 Tom Holmo. Burr 
Bernstein goes in motion. And Malone with some time. Good pocket throws and overthrows his man, intended receiver Anthony Miller, the fine rookie out of Tennessee. There's some speed. I'll say something like a 10, 200 meters, and uh, this young man can fly. The only thing that this young group of receivers do not have, and that's experience. They're going to be, uh, as, according to Al Saunders, the same type of group of receivers that Dan Fouts threw to, but as soon as they get some experience. Anthony Miller, a 93-yard kickoff return for a touchdown against the Rams last week. San Diego has not done well so far this season on third downs, and they've got a big mountain to climb here. to the far side as his man knocked out of bounds short of first down yardage is number 87 Quinn Early the rookie out of Iowa well they get him on a little offsides and that's Mark Malone doing that's but he he calls that with his defense voice. was offside number 75 five yards third down one way to stop that rush, one way to slow down that big pass rush in these obvious passing downs is to use your voice and try to make them jump. Referee Ben Drive calling it on Kevin Fagan, number 75. Penalties have been something that uh, haven't been new at all with the 49ers this season. Talked to some of their players yesterday and asked them about the play, about their penalties, and uh, they really couldn't give you a, a solid answer on why. Lack of concentration, uh, some of them good calls, some calls they, they thought weren't so good, but a combination of all three. Randy Cross seems to think it. They're going to accept the penalty. Ben Dreif just clarifying that they will walk off the five yards against San Francisco, and it's a third and 14 now. Randy Cross of the 49ers is saying it's kind of become habit to throw the flag on the 49ers. And, they, and he also said that, that no matter, they expect to get penalties now because of all the ones they've had this year, and you have to win in spite of those. Play through the penalties. 8.51 to play. Third and 14. And Malone will operate out of the shotgun with three wide receivers. And here comes the 49ers. Blitz is picked up over the middle. Bernstein will come up way shy of first down yardage. Greg Cox, number 38, with the first hit on Bernstein. And the Chargers will kick it away. Well, it just goes to show you the importance of every play. You get the first play with Gary Anderson loses nine yards, puts him in a hole, changes your entire perspective of what you expect on defense, puts you in a hole from the start, and as a result, they had a terrific field position, and they get nothing out of it. Ralph Mosienko. Second best punter in the NFL with a 44.7 average to John Taylor. And Taylor from his own 10. And Taylor is buried, and here's a penalty marker down. Randy Kirk in on the stop. 37-yard kick and a four-yard return, and we'll check the penalty. Illegal block on number 25 on a receiving team. Half the distance to the goal. Doug DeBose is the guilty party for the 49ers, and that'll push the Niners back to their own six-yard line. And once again, Montana working from the shadows of his end zone. Montana with Craig and Rathman in the backfield. Wilson and Rice, the wide receivers, and Ron Heller, the tight end. And on the line, Wallace, Sapolo, Cross, Bruce Collett, and Bart Merritt. And that play goes nowhere. Mike Charles, number 71. Well, it's a game of field position. And they get good, they get to a poor field position because of San Diego getting good field position. They kick them in the hole and play defense. Here's a replay of it, and it's just penetration. There's a penetration right there by number 71. Doesn't matter who it is, but if you let anybody get that kind of penetration in your backfield, Greg, it destroys all the time. Mike Charles, a six-year man out of Syracuse, a two-yard loss at second and 12. Montana from his end zone goes for Jerry Rice. Incomplete and almost intercepted, number 22, Gil Bird. Who told us yesterday he could very well be man for man on Jerry Rice today. 
Well, they're going to play a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. They have to put pressure on Joe Montana. In order to do that, they're going to bring some people. They're going to bring some linebackers, and they're going to get in there, designated pass rush people, play an awful lot of man-to-man -man, uh, type defense, and it's going to be up to the corners, uh, Bird, and the other corner, uh, Sam Seal, to uh, to do a good cover job. We asked Gil if uh, he's feeling uneasy at all about covering Jerry Rice one-on-one. -on -one. He said no. No, he said he, he welcomed the challenge. They're, they're playing with an awful lot of uh, aggressiveness. Third and 12, draw play. Here comes Roger Craig. Out to the 10 and brought down at about the 10-yard line. Elvis Patterson, number 34, one of the extra defensive backs up for the tackle. And after pickup of six, the Niners will kick it away. Well, the Chargers have to be very pleased with the majority of this game thus far. The first five minutes or the first eight minutes have been played down in the 49er into the field. And that's what they would like to do is you keep a team pinned in. It cuts your game plan almost in half, maybe more than that, Greg. It, it limits you so much. So there's a lot of things you can do because of the poor field position. Lionel James, number 26, back to receive for San Diego. And Helton will get this one away from his goal line. James at his own 45. Across midfield to about the 46-yard line of the 49ers and 24 Harry Sidney there to make the stop. 44-yard kick by Helton and an 8-yard return. Well, you play it against a good team like San Francisco, and you get this kind of field position. You, you can't come away without getting some type of points. Granted, they, they've kept San Francisco in a hole in bad field position, but you have to score some points. You can't keep dodging those bullets. You can't let this team off the hook. you got to keep the pressure on. Best way, score points. We talked to Mark Malone yesterday. He was growing a Dan Fouts-type beard. That would help me play like Dan Fouts. I'd, I'd keep a beard, too. <laughs> First down from the 45. Malone right to the air. So the time over the middle. Hits his man. 83 is Anthony Miller. Five-yard pickup. And Ricky Ellison was there for the stop. Quick drop by Malone. Yes, it's, it's the H-back type, uh, Washington-type offense where you just take what the defense gives you. Here is a, a perfect situation of taking that little hook right there, number 83, right there. Take that, create the second and fives, and you're on your way. That's exactly what Malone is looking at. Gary Anderson, the lone setback behind him, and Bernstein flying to the bottom of your screen. It'll be Anderson. Off left tackle. And Kevin Fagan was there to make the hit. Pick up of one, it'll be third and four. And again, if you notice, most of their running game is aimed at the corners, the off-tackle area outside with Gary Anderson. And again, to reiterate, it's because of the great nose tackle, Michael Carter. We looked at his forearms up close yesterday. Ooh. I wouldn't run at him either. Mm -hmm. Tight end Arthur Cox out of the San Diego lineup, and Quinn Early is in as a third wide receiver on third and four now. Cox continues to run. We have 5.20 to play here in the first quarter. Greg them along with Ken Stabler's scoreless ball game so far. Along with time, and it's back out of the air. 78, Pierce Holt, the rookie out of Angelo State, who has played so well for the 49er. Knocked it out of the air and forces the Chargers into another punting situation. Again, terrific field position and coming away with no points. Inko will kick to John Taylor. Taylor, the NFL rule punt return, will let this one bounce. The Chargers will down this one inside the five yard line. And once again, the 49ers will go to work operating from some very familiar territory so far today. Jamie Holland was there, 34-yard punt by Mozienko. Questions all week long about Montana's health. Bill Walsh says he's okay. He said one thing you look at, but Joe Montana is the fatigue factor. If Joe starts to get a little tired, then the ball starts coming up a little bit short. He's not able to use his ability to avoid the rush, the quick feet. It's a fatigue factor that, that works on Joe Montana. 4:55 to play first quarter. From their own four, the 49ers go back to work in Montana, back to throw. Got it, Jerry Rice, wide open. That's all over. Ring the meter. 90 
86 yards, and the 49ers strike just like that. People have been wondering about Jerry Rice so far this year. There's no question about this one. Well, when you play a lot of man-to-man -man type coverage and you ask your people to cover the great players like the Jerry Rice, here's something that can happen to you. This could have possibly been a blown coverage. He's so wide open that you don't know if it was a zone or a man. So maybe a blown coverage to get that open, Greg. 44, Martin Bayless was the nearest defender to Jerry Rice, and that wasn't very close. Montana releasing just before he was hit by Mike Charlie. Colfer. Line drive. Extra point just barely made it over the crossbar. Ninety-six yard touchdown reception for Jerry Rice is a new 49er record. That's his seventh touchdown of the season. The reason there were questions for Jerry about Jerry Rice is because he had 23 in 11 games last year. This is only his seventh of the year. It's only his seventh of the year, and he, he's been bothered by an ankle. And you get a receiver that's like a thoroughbred horse who has a who has a leg problem, an ankle problem, or a knee problem. It takes an awful lot away from him. This guy's uh, is healthier than he's probably been all year. People have been questioning their offense. They're ranked 15th in passing. Why is a team that's usually higher than that in passing? It's because Jerry Rice and that gentleman you see right there, they've been banged up most of the year. So with the point after 49ers jump off to the 7 to nothing lead. And now the Chargers, who have had the edge so far this afternoon, make one mistake defensively, and it costs them and puts them in the hole. Make one mistake defensively, and then again, getting a good field position. The two series they had the football to 50, 40-yard line right in that area, not coming away with any points. That comes back to haunt you, and it has. Mark Malone on the sideline talking with Babe Waffenberg, who started the first six games of the season for the Chargers. for kicking it away. At about the two is Jamie Holland. 15. Gets a block at the 20. Penalty markers fly as he is out near the 30-yard line. Harry Sidney there to make the stop. And we'll see if the flag set the Chargers back. Maybe the blocking was a little too good, Kim. <laughs> That's a no-no. Holding number 34 on the receiving team. That's a 10-yard penalty, and it's first down. 34 is Elvis Patterson, and we'll take another look. Look on the right side of your screen, number 34, Elvis Patterson, right there. See him blocking the guy from behind? You can't block him from behind like that. You have to see the numbers in the front. Do you use manacles on that? <laughs> 4.32 to play. First quarter, 49ers leading San Diego 7-0. And Malone goes to work now from his own 12-yard line. Anderson and Spencer in the backfield behind him. Malone over the middle, in and out of the hands of Anderson. Well, the most important play for San Diego is going to be on first down, Greg. They have to get good first down plays to keep this defense out of a rhythm, to keep those designated pass rushers over on the sidelines, and the first down is the most important thing. A good example, when they log, Gary Anderson loses nine yards from the last series of downs, puts them in a hole, they are in trouble. Fourth quarter in Philadelphia, the Eagles lead over Phoenix is 10 points, 31-21. And the Jets have come back to take a four-point lead over Miami in the fourth quarter. Here, 7 nothing 49ers on second and 10. Gary Anderson trying to break away and can't do it. And big Michael Walter, 6'3", 240 pounds, in his sixth year out of Oregon, makes the stop. 
Just a draw action out of a passing type formation. A little reverse draw. The quarterback reverses out, brings the ball back to the back and let him cut off the block. But Michael Walter reads it, gets off of the block and makes a nice play. One guy to watch in that San Francisco secondary, number 21, the cornerback Eric Wright, who told us yesterday, frankly, he's lost a couple of steps with the two groin injuries. His injuries have bothered him. And he said the way that it will change his style of play, instead of playing a seven or eight yard cushion on a receiver, he may play nine, ten yards. We'll keep an eye on that. He's on number 87, Quinn Early. Hunt, hunt, hunt. Malone in the end zone, throws it away. And referee Ben Dreif is going to take a good look at this. Dreif looked like he was reaching for his flag, then may have seen a receiver in the vicinity of the ball that hit the turf. Well, you're going to take a look at it. Malone does a nice job of getting rid of the ball, but does the in-the-grass crew come in right here? Does he have him? Does he call, throw the in-the-grass flag, or does he let the play go? He lets the play go incomplete. Nice job by Malone of getting rid of it. Danny Stubbs and Charles Haley in on Malone. And Mosienko will kick it away from his own end zone. Again, they had a bad first down play, Greg. And, and that's the result right there. Bad first down play, pitch in a hole. John Taylor from his own 45 and out of bounds at about midfield. That stops the clock with three minutes, 26 seconds to play here in the first quarter. 45-yard kick by Mosienko. And not a bad one under the circumstances. Well, it just shows how one particular play can turn the entire game around, the situation around. They're on their own five. They get a 95-yard, 96-yard touchdown pass. They hold the offense down in the hole. And now look how field position has changed in this game. It has done a 360, a 180. San Francisco now has the ball midfield. Bill Walsh, you saw him there talking to Joe Montana. Wants Montana to throw about 35 times today. Says he'd like him to complete about 25 of them. Get in the rhythm, throw 35 times, complete 25 for about 300 yards, which would be a normal Joe Montana day. San, Francisco, uh, San Diego cannot let him get in that kind of rhythm. Roger Craig blowing back behind Montana as the Niners starts from midfield. And Craig goes down in the backfield. 91, Leslie O'Neill was in, in a hurry. This group of front people that they have, Greg, are, are, are not your household names. There are a lot of guys that just want to play hard. They play with a lot of enthusiasm. That's one of them right there, Leslie O'Neill and Mike Charles, Lee Williams leading the AFC in sacks. They've got a good group of people that apply a lot of pressure. Their offense is their problem. If it not for a serious knee injury suffered by O'Neill two years ago, he might be a household name and may yet be. You bet. Second and 15, Montana fakes the play action over the middle, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. 85, Mike Wilson. 22, Gil Bird was right there with the football. So Montana now looks at a third and 15. And this is the way that San Diego wanted to play San Francisco, is put them in predictable situations. Now with four wide receivers on third and 15. Montana feels the pressure and scampers away from it. Caught from behind at about the 45-yard line. Leonard Coleman, number 31, one of the guys chasing him down from behind. Well, everybody holds their breath when that guy right there takes off with the ball, but that's one of the things that, uh, that uh, Bill Walsh said that he would keep a close watch on Montana. Was he able to use those quick feet as he does right here? They get a good pass rush up the field. Watch his quick feet right here. He finds a little spot, buys some time by getting out of there, and then has to run for his life, try to run for the first down. That's something that Walsh will keep a close look at. Pick up of 10 by Montana on the run. It'll be fourth and five, and Barry Helton is on. He'll kick from about his own 45 to Lionel James, who is standing at his 10. Helton aims for the corner. Well, this one will bounce inside the five and on into the end zone. 45-yard punt, a little uh, altercation at about the 25-yard line between a member of each team. 96. is not listed on the scorecard. No 96. Boy, there's one out there that's mad as the devil. <laughs> Minute 50 to play. First quarter. And since that big 96-yard pop Montana to Rice, most of the game has now shifted to the San Diego end of the field. 
brings the team up first down at 20. Anderson. Hole at right guard out to about the 25, 26. Uh, call it six yard pickup. Philadelphia leading Phoenix 31 21 in the fourth quarter. Cleveland over the Redskins 17 13. Cincinnati a 35 21 winner over the Buffalo Bills. And the Jets beat the Miami Dolphins 48 34, making it a sweep of the two games between those two teams. Pittsburgh over Kansas City 16 10. 7 0 49 is here on second and four at the 26. for a first down. Anderson, very typical of the scat back type of football player, Kenny. All he is is uh, he's not very big. They, exactly. Again, let's pay attention to how well they do on first down. See what they do on first down? They get the good plays. They get the first downs. They create something. The bad first down plays always put you in a hole. Let's look for Anderson to run outside. Let's look for their passing game to be short and underneath the coverage. Continues to run. We're now down to 30 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. And Malone will throw on first down here. And out to the near side, incomplete, intended for Jamie Holland. The second year man out of Ohio State. Tim McKire was right there with him. Well, you just bite your tongue, you know, when something like that happens. You know, you, you hope he comes up with that play. It gives you that short yarded situation that we keep talking about. You can't throw the ball any better than Malone did there. Nice read on the coverage. Scores continue to come in on CBS Sports Wire. Patriots and Colts 7-7 seven, seven, first quarter score. 22 seconds to play here in the first quarter. Second and 10 for San Diego. Holland in motion. Malone with time and over the middle, incomplete, threw it behind his intended receiver, and that was Anderson out of the backfield. Five hundred and ninety-two total yards for the New York Jets, who beat Miami 38-34. Hmm. That's an awful lot of yards. Go home and get some rest. Receivers, running backs. and Anderson out Quinn early in the lineup. One of the things Malone says is a bit chancy when you go out there is because this receiving core of the Chargers is so young. Yeah, reading these guys has been a problem for Malone because they are so young. They're not used to the, this type of offense and they have a lot of option routes. I mean, they're, they're not out in sync at all. Whistle blows and Malone may have run out of time here before the snap. Offense the way of the game, five yard, third down. And Drive says that's exactly what it was. And it'll give Malone now a third and 15. They've struggled on offense, and it's, they have an awful lot of those young receivers. Uh, they've, they've turned this team into a power running team as opposed to a finesse trap blocking type team that they used to be. And the combination of those two things, all the different quarterbacks they've used with Vlasic and uh, Mark Malone, Babe Lothenberg, and they've never had any continuity in their offense all year. Their defense has kept them in every game they played. Al Saunders said yesterday, we just like to keep it close with the defense and hope that the offense can give us a big play near the end. Third and 15. Six defensive backs in the lineup now for the 49ers. Malone has a man turned in underneath. And it's incomplete. Intended for Lionel James. Well, they'll give him that. They'll drop back and play that deep zone, which they played then. They'll give him underneath and come up and make the play short of the first down, then hope for good field position. Just a deep zone. You can tell the fans did not like taking the short one. Mosienko in to kick to John Taylor. The foot kicker booms this one. Taylor at about his 30. Get past two to the 40 where he is hit and brought down. Jamie Holland, one of the first tacklers to reach him for the Chargers. And a penalty marker is down on the field as time has expired here in the first quarter. 
And Ben Dreith is pointing at the 49ers. We'll see. Well, Mozienko hasn't left the field yet for the Chargers, so he may think that he's kicking again. Well, this will be against the Niners. Holding on number 57 on a receiving team before the kick. That's a 10-yard penalty. San Diego, first down. So Sam Kennedy's holding call will give the Chargers a first down. when second quarter action begins. That's the kind of mistake that Bill Walsh does not like at all. Well, they've been making those mistakes all year long. They, they've been penalized an awful lot, the inconsistently quarterback because of injuries and Jerry Rice being banged up. And they really haven't played as well offensively as they did last year. Their defense is still playing extremely well. well Bill Walsh readily admits we've botched a few games so far this year. And yet, they're still very much in the hunt. Take a look at the, uh, at the standings. First of all, for uh, San Francisco, San Francisco running two games behind the New Orleans Saints. The Saints leading the way at 9-3. and three, And the 49ers and the Rams right behind them at 7-5. and five. Right, That's the end of the quarter. While down on the field, Ben Dreith is announcing the official end of the first quarter. Live at Jack Murphy Stadium, Greg Gumbel along with Ken Stabler. 49ers leading the Chargers by a score of 7 to nothing. We're talking about those divisional standings. Let's take a look at them. And first of all, in the AFC West, where no one, Kenny, wants this uh, wants this division, it seems. Doesn't seem that way. Everybody uh, locked up at 6-6. Six and six. Of course, the Raiders uh, may have the edge in that division, Greg, because of being 5-0 and oh within their division. So uh, let's give them the first look. All right. Meanwhile... San Diego is not completely out of it. San Francisco definitely not out of this race because the last three weeks of the season, they play New Orleans, the Rams, and Atlanta. As Bill Walsh said yesterday, they've got their destiny in their hands. It's all up to them. They play within their division the last three weeks, and they can determine what happens. 7-0 49ers. We were talking about those problems that the Niners have been having with the penalty flags. That pretty much says it all. Only Houston, Minnesota, and Dallas have done worse. And that's not like a, a Walsh coach team. They're usually well coached, and they usually are one of the lower penalized teams in the league. As we get underway here in the second quarter, first down. Malone out of the backfield. Bernstein. Bernstein across the 40, and he's close to a first down. And Rob Bernstein, the H back in this system, does a lot of different things. You'll see him going in motion back across the backfield on occasion. You'll see him blocking on the nose man on occasion. And you'll see him release into the flats and, and in the hook type patterns, the short ball control type passes, as they have right here. Ball's behind him, makes a nice adjustment to the ball to turn around and gets the first down. Bernstein in his second year on Texas AM picks up 11 and gives San Diego a first down now at their own 42. Bernstein now a slot back to the near side. And the pitch is for Anderson. Anderson trying to turn the corner and does. Out over the 45. Loses the ball after the whistle. That'll be a five-yard pickup. And again, Michael Walter in on a stop this time along with Larry Roberts. Yeah, good job by David Richards there. Right tackle and Dennis McKnight to right guard off the right side. Off those corners, as we said earlier in the broadcast, that they're not going to run up the middle because of Carter and those middle inside linebackers off the corners and outside. The Phoenix-Philadelphia game is now a final. Philadelphia wins it by a score of 31 to 21. That means in the NFC East, Philadelphia goes to eight and five, Phoenix to seven and six. Second down from the 47. Malone throwing down the sideline, and that's intercepted. Ronnie Lott. Ronnie Lott. The blockers in front of him to the 25. Inside the 25, and the 49ers will have good position to go to work again. 40 
six yard return by Ronnie Lott on a pass that you have to question, Kenny, whether it should have been thrown or not. You really do, Greg. You have to question the, the timing of the pass. It's a zone type, and there's going to be a short defensive guy. You have to get this ball away in a hurry. The ball should have been gone a long time ago. Over the first guy you see right there, number 21, Eric Wright, and before 42, Ronnie Lott can get to the ball. Ball hung up in the air too long, thrown too late, and there you see the result. Fifth interception of the year for Ronnie Lott, number 43 of his career. He is only four behind Jimmy Johnson, who's the all-time leader for the 49ers, who has 47. I gave him a few myself. <laughs> From the 23, Roger Craig straight ahead. Craig breaks free at the 15, all the way inside the five to about the three-yard line. Well, they, they've been running the ball extremely well, and, and because they haven't been throwing the ball well, Greg, they've relied on the run. They've worked hard on the run. This guy right here is carrying a huge load of their offense percentage-wise, raises those knees up high, great pass receiver, good runner. He's been carrying his team offensively. Roger Craig needs 117 yards to set a new single-season rushing record in San Francisco. First and goal from the one. Rathman did not get in. Twelve minutes, 25 seconds to play here in the second quarter. We welcome those of you who have seen the Eagles defeat the Phoenix Cardinals 31 to 21. Greg Gumbel along with Ken Stabler at Jack Murphy Stadium here in San Diego where the 49ers on a 96-yard touchdown pass, Montana to Jerry Rice, lead it 7 to nothing and are knocking at the door again. Second and goal from the one. Roger Craig. Touchdown, 49ers. Watch this athletic ability of Roger Craig. Great pass receiver, good goal line runner because of his leaping ability. Watch him get up in the air right here. There he comes. Gets in there for the touchdown. NASA would like to have boosters like that. <laughs> There's a low angle of it. Kind of reminds me of myself heading for that goal line. Headed for pay dirt. Touchdown. I think you're the only one that's reminded of yourself on that play. Extra point attempt by Kofer is good. And so with 12.01 to play here in the second quarter, 49ers turn the turnover into points on the board and lead it. 14 zip. 12.01 to play here in the second quarter at Jack Murphy Stadium. 14-0, 49ers in the lead. San Diego having turned the ball over and Ronnie Lott returning an interception 46 yards to set up their last score. Suffered a slight hamstring pull on the play. Yeah, those guys pick them off and they head back with them. They're running and they're doing things they don't usually do, running with a the football. They're stretching out, trying to make as many yards as they can and uh, get those pulls. 49ers say it's questionable whether Lott will return this afternoon. We will see. Kofer kicks it away. And bouncing out of bounds at the five-yard line, Jamie Holland let it roll. Chargers in the hole right now because of some uncharacteristic football. Only two turnovers the previous two weeks coming in today. And they've had a fumble and an interception. 11.55 to play. Second quarter, we'll be right back as the Chargers try to get their act together. 11.55 to play in the second quarter. San Francisco... 49ers have never won here in San Diego, but they're off to the good start. 14-0, 38, Greg Cox is now in at safety for Ronnie Lott, as we told you a couple of minutes ago. Slightly strained hamstring, and they're going to sit him down for a while and check him out. Cox, the rookie out of San Jose State. First down for San Diego, the ball at their own 35-yard line. will begin on the ground with Anderson. Anderson with room around the left side. Cuts it back inside and down to the San Francisco 40-yard line. Ricky Ellison cracked him down with another big play on offense for the Chargers who've had a couple of them today. And it's that outside running game we talked about earlier. Off the corners and get him outside behind Ken Delaford, number 61, the left tackle. Broderick Thompson, 76, left guard. Here you see it right here. And when Gary Anderson gets in the secondary, he's in an awful lot of trouble. As you see right here, they've got to capitalize on this good field position. They didn't earlier, and he come back to Harlem. Michael Carter, the fine nose tackle. 
Not only are they double teaming it, but even after they double team it, they were still run away from it. First down at the 39 for the Chargers. Again, Anderson. And this time, Anderson gets very little up the middle. Pierce Holt, number 78, as the Charger defense regroups. And really, the Charger defense has played pretty well. They gave up the one big play, the long bomb to Rice that really got him. It started the, the downfall, but they've really played very well. The offense hurt them by turning the ball over twice. Pick up of three on the play. And Ronnie Lott watching the action from the sideline. Second and seven, 10 40 to play here in the first half. Malone holds the receiver to the left side. He rolls that way and throws to the sideline out of the hands of 83 Anthony Miller. Well, this guy's going to get open because he has that sprinter speed, you know, the 10-2, 200, a 10-2, 100-meter uh, type guy, but he doesn't have the concentration. They still don't have the feel of the passing game, the reading of the coverages, knowing when to stop, when to go. Plus, you need to catch those that hit you between the 8 and the 3. Yeah, sprinter speed, he had sprinter's hands on that one, too. <laughs> Third and seven. The two rookies, Miller and Quinn Early. Opposite sides of the field, along with second-year man Jamie Holland in the slot on the near side. Malone fakes the handoff, and here's Malone on the run, and he's got all kinds of room to the five. Touchdown! Chargers slice the San Francisco lead in half. 10 20 to play in the first half, and the Niners lead it now 14 to 7. We'll be back. Back at Jack Murphy Stadium, Mark Malone always seems to make the big plays against the Niners. Well, what makes this a big play, Greg? They caught him in a man to man defense. Look at all the linebackers and all the safeties running with the people that they're covering. Nobody for the quarterback. The safeties are not in there because they're covering people, and he just takes it in for the touchdown. 14 rushing touchdowns for Pittsburgh, and he adds a fifth here. Steve DeLine, a 15th, rather. DeLine kicks to Doug DeBose. And DeBose is hit hard at about the 23 or 24 yard line. with the Dan Fouts type beard. And you know, Dan, uh, Mark Malone said he has really enjoyed being here and being with Jerry Rome, the offensive coordinator. It's somebody that he can talk to. He said he didn't have that in Pittsburgh, somebody who's been there. Ten minutes, 11 seconds to play here in the second quarter. Chargers fans are riled up because of that man's 36-yard touchdown jaunt. What you think of if you're in Southern California as late November is ready to turn into early December and a smiling Mark Malone on the sideline. And upstairs, the man who will be honored here at halftime, as number 14 will be retired, our colleague here at CBS Sports, Dan Fouts. What a great leader. What a great inspirational player. Didn't play with the best defenses in the league, but he sure put it up in the air, rolled up a lot of yards. 49ers going to work with Robert Craig, carrying the ball, trying to get outside, and he won't do it. Well, you take a big play by like Mark Malone's touchdown run, can uh, fire up a young, enthusiastic team like this, and uh, they're, uh, they're playing extremely hard. Gary Plummer, number 50, who was doubtful right up until game time today with a hip flexor, made the tackle for a three-yard loss. Loss of four. I think you look at this San Diego defense, and they are a pretty good defense. They built a good defense around that front group. Now they have to build an offense. Second and 13. <laughs> Rice in motion. Montana escapes the pressure. Near side, incomplete. Intended for Mike Wilson, the eight-year man out of Washington State. And now we're seeing the Chargers with that renewed pressure on Montana in the backfield. And these predictable situations is what favors the San Diego defense. Get them in these obvious third and long situations where they can bring in those designated pass rushers, Leslie O'Neill, Tyrone Keyes, Lee Williams leading the AFC with 10 sacks. They put a lot of pressure on. 
49ers 0 for 3 on third down so far this afternoon. In fact, Montana's only completion is the bomb to Rice. But he's going to go up top again, and he's got Rice open at the 40, and it's a first down. Elvis Patterson on the coverage. 19-yard pickup. And this man's piling up some yardage. Well, he's going to he's gonna get an awful lot of respect out of anybody that he plays. They hit him for 96-yard touchdown. They're going to play off of him an awful uh, long way, and no, no exception here. Elvis Patterson giving him that much room. You just take that first down. Patterson, one of the extra defensive backs, found himself all alone on Rice and had to give him some room. Big first down conversion for Montana. Ball now at the 39, and he'll go back up top. Again, he eludes the rush and throws out here and complete. John Frank, number 86, inside the 30, and finally knocked out of bounds at about the 23. It's in our families that we pass on our traditions, things that our parents taught us and their parents before them. Eight yards. That's what they look at on Montana. If he's playing well, if he's in his rhythm and doing the things that he does the best, it's this right here. He's moving around in the pocket, buying time, finding the open receiver. He's got great vision. He knows where all of his receivers are all the time. Watch this little move right there. Then he starts looking for people. See his eyes, finds Frank. There's a result, first and 10. Good catch by John Frank, too. First down at the 23-yard line. Martin Bayless. Number 44 in the secondary now for the Chargers. Montana will throw again. Near side has his man. Rice had it and dropped it. And then he is hit. And that will be ruled a completion and a recovery by Rice. And Gil Bird was there to hit it. Pick up a three on the play. You don't hear much about Gil Bird, but the Niners seem to have some respect for him. They bring Jerry Rice across the backfield. They give a play fake to, to Rathman, 44, and try to get him on a, little, on a little out route, trying to get him out here with all the room that they're giving. He drops the ball. Bird makes a nice play. Can there be any sweeter sight to Bill Walsh's eyes than Montana completing passes to Jerry Rice? And Jerry Rice hitting the one for 90 yards, the big ones, the big play specialist. And on second and seven, Montana's pointing the other way. And Ben Dreith is going to try to figure this out. And what's happening here is replay official Dixon Holman is taking a look at the previous completion as to whether or not that is a completion. Uh, I think he had possession. The play does stand as called, and now here comes Rathman. And Rathman is met hard inside the 20. Pick up a three on the play. Cedric Figaro and Gary Plummer there to make the hit. Figaro, the rookie out of Notre Dame, and isn't he flying high today? <laughs> Third and four. A big defensive play for the Chargers here. 83 Terry Greer is the wide receiver. Montana over the middle has Roger Craig and Craig down to about the 12 and enough for a first down. Well, down inside the 20-yard line, the 15-yard line where they are now, you always expect a man-to-man -man type coverage. You take number 33, Roger Craig. Uh, terrific year pass receiving. You get him hooked up on a linebacker. That's the mismatch that you look for. Roger Craig comes in as the leading rusher in the NFC and the leading NFC back in reception. And first down at the 11 for San Francisco. Rackman. Rackman wrapped up as he crosses the 10 down to about the 8. Figaro and Gilbert. We're there to make the hit. Call it a three-yard pickup and a second and seven from the eight. And down here in this territory, the 49ers have done very well this year when it comes to putting points on the board. A lot of weapons down here. They bring in their two tight ends now, Greg, and one receiver. They took out Mike Wilson. Two tight ends, two backs, and a wide receiver. The two tight ends are Hello, 89, and Brent Jones, 84. Uh-oh, the backfield. Uh -oh. Rathman, one-handed grab. And across the five to about the three. 
Gary Plummer there to prevent the touchdown. Nice catch by Tom Rathman. Nice one-handed catch. You have to think that somebody blew an assignment. You expect man-to-man -man coverage, you would think that a linebacker would be all over Rathman. But he's out there by himself, and there's nobody out there. The cornerback has to come up. Maybe Figueroa, 51, late on getting to his assignment. Nice little one-handed catch. You expect him to make those. Can't throw them easy all the time. He's got to make the tough catch. Can't hit him in the numbers every time. The quarterback's best excuse. <laughs> Third and one. Montana under the gun. Flips it. Roger Craig, touchdown. Montana, great balance, great presence, and finds the open man however. However. Doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how you get it there as long as you get it there. That'll look like a strike in the paper tomorrow. No one says it has to be pretty. That's right. Good play by Montana and Craig. Here's another look. This one is best. Coming out of the play fake. He's trying to get the tight end back to the corner. He gets some heat. Watch this. Great balance. Use the, let me just shovel this one out to you and you go from there with it. Mike Kofer on for the point after. Barry Hunter holding. And the kick is good. We have five minutes, 49 seconds to play as the 49ers reestablish that 14-point lead on another fine play by number 16. Welcome back to San Diego, 5.49 to play in the second quarter. The Niners leading the Chargers by a score of 21 to 7, and there has been no lack of action so far. Jerry Rice, a 96-yard touchdown catch from Joe Montana. Mark Malone with a 36-yard touchdown run. And Malone has uh, had his problems with the San Diego receivers. You see San Diego's own the football, but the Niners have been the ones putting in the end zone. Most often they lead it by two touchdowns as Kofer kicks to the end zone. Jamie Holland will run it out. 15, out to the 20. Danny Stubbs, number 96, making the hit. And Mark Malone goes back to work. Well, his receivers really haven't helped him out a lot, uh, as we saw the, inter the drop passes and the turnovers. 5.39 to play first half. We'll take a timeout and come right back to San Diego. 21-7 49ers. Inch and a half of rain has left the natural turf a little slippery here, but not too much for Joe Montana to deal with. Well, Craig gets the play fake, and smart players make big plays. Craig has enough presence, and he wasn't the receiver on that play. Has enough presence to, to turn and look for Montana. First down, Chargers on the draw. Tim Spencer, number 43, picks up four on the play. It'll be second and six. You know, with the score the way it is right now, Greg, at 21 to 7, they have to stay with their game plan. Their game plan was to run off the corners, run outside, and throw the ball underneath against the zones of San Francisco. Look for the man to man type coverages to go for the big one. To just stay within the game plan, still early. Spencer and Barry Redden in the backfield now. And Ronnie Lott back into the lineup for the 49er. Second and seven. Over the middle, penalty marker flies, complete to Bernstein. Ellison with the tackle, and now we'll check the flag. And Ellison is down and uh, appears to be hurt. hurt. So while they check Ellison, we'll check Ben Dry. Illegal chop block on a center. Holding on 61. The chop block is a 15-yard penalty. That's the one we're going to access. Number 61 is Ken Dallafor. Left tackle. Well, they get to center. They get Dan Rosado for the chop block. We'll see where that is right here. There's a chop block. It comes from the left guard right there on Michael Carter. That's one of the things that they do to try to stop him, double team him, those illegal chop blocks. We talked to him yesterday, and he said one thing that he has to do is to study game plans and to study formation to know where everybody's going to be coming from because he gets hit from every angle, angle that you can imagine. He did say he gets a little busier as <laughs> days go on. Meanwhile, Ricky Ellison able to walk off the field under his own power. Second down and 19 now after the assessment of the penalty. And the clock continues to run with 4.40 to play. And 
Anderson. And Anderson gets little. A yard to be exact. On the CBS Sports Wire, the Rams leading Denver 10-7 in the second quarter. And the Patriots with a one touchdown lead over the Colts in the second. Philadelphia beat Phoenix to go to 8-5 in the NFC East while the Cardinals fall to 7-6. Cleveland sends Washington to 6-7 on the year. Three wide receivers in for San Diego on third and 18. Malone over the middle, Bernstein with room to run, 25-30, first down San Diego to about the 35. 22-yard pickup, Bernstein broke a similar play like that against the Rams last week. It's that underneath passing against that zone as we've been talking about. Watch the linebackers for San Francisco. Watch everybody drop out of there. Everybody's drop back, drop back. Dump the ball to Bernstein. Has great presence to know where the first down stick is. Dives for it, makes a big play. Tom Holmo, number 46. In his fifth year out of BYU, made the stop on that man, Rod Bernstein. Chance to play regularly and show his wares. Four receptions for 52 yards for Bernstein. First down, San Diego, their own 35. Malone eludes the rush. Throws out here. Complete to Anderson. Anderson across the 40, almost to the 43 yard line. Michael Walter made the stop. Nice job of that guy right there of uh, evading the rush. Nice job by Anderson to come back to your quarterback when he is in trouble. That's what all receivers are taught to do. Watch Malone right here get away from the rush. Here comes Haley, their designated pass rusher. Leads the team in sacks. He pushed him by. Malone does a good job of stepping up in the pocket. Let him run by and then finding a receiver. Well, 42-yard line now. Three-yard child. First down under the gun. And Malone's pass batted back into his face by Michael Carter. And there are those arms we were talking about Ooh, Enough material in that jersey to make a blanket. <laughs> that one was set up for a screen, and Michael Carter foiled that completely. It really was. It's, it's a screen-type play. They let them let him get penetration, let him get penetration, but not that much. You, you have to give your quarterback enough room to get the screen off. Mm. Michael Carter at 6'4", 280 pounds. Malone out of the shotgun on third and three. Ronnie Watt shows blitz up the middle, but he doesn't go. Malone will run it up the middle, dives for the first down, and appears to have it. Michael Walter made the stop, but not before Malone picked up the first down. And the clock continues to run as we wind down toward the two-minute warning. You bet. Let it run down, get the two-minute warning, come over to the sideline and get with Coach Saunders there and, and try to get something out of this last two minutes. Clock stopped on the field. We have two minutes to play here in the first half. Chargers down by two touchdowns, but on the move. We'll be back. The newfound power of the Saints, the top-rated defense of the Vikings, two teams with big playoff dreams next Sunday on CBS Sports. Two minutes to play here in the first half. San Francisco leading San Diego by a score of 21-7. to Greg Gumbel along with Ken Stabler. A couple different schools of thought right here on defense, Greg. You can play zones, give them the little things, and hope that they can't go the 50 yards or get in the field goal range. Or you can play a man-to-man -man type coverage. Try to shut them down right here. I would guess they're going to play a zone here. Malone out of the shotgun over the middle has his man. 86 is Jamie Holland across midfield to about the 47 and the Chargers will go straight to the snap without a huddle. Pick up a seven, it'll be second and three. Malone, far side, almost intercepted by number 21, Eric Wright. Intended for Quinn Early, the rookie out of Iowa. Eric Wright's been bothered by a, uh, a couple of growing injuries and, and talked to him yesterday. He said he, had, he felt like he had lost a step or two, had to play with a little deeper cushion than normal because of his injuries. Here the ball kind of hangs and gives Eric Wright time to make up the ground. If you look at a coaching point right there, the receiver should come back for the football, which his young receiver didn't do. 
Eric Wright says, these days I am definitely relying on technique. Quinn Early, the receiver, out there working on Eric Wright. Those young receivers need to know when to come back, when to sit down. That's one of the problems they've had. Chargers need three yards for the first down, and they've got it. This is Lionel James, and James looking to get out of bounds, and he did close to the 40-yard line. Good call. Throw something on the outside that will get you the first down. It will also get the guy out of bounds to stop the clock. Here you see the secondary back there. They're playing. look like a man-to-man -man type coverage. You see the safeties rotating. It is a man-to-man -man type coverage. There's the back out in the flat. There's a responsible person, the linebacker, trying to get to it. Makes the play too late. Cleared out, and James just cut underneath. For the reception in the first down, the ball... Now at the 49 or 40 with a minute 31 to play here in the first half. Over the middle, Bernstein again twists away from one tackler across the 35 to the 33. Again, it's the underneath passing against the zone. They drop the linebackers out of there. Bernstein delays, lets the linebackers clear, and they'll just take that and work the ball down in. Chargers stop the clock with a minute 24 to play. When we come back, it'll be second and three. Chargers on the move inside a minute and a half here in the first half. Next Saturday here on CBS, the Mercedes Horse Jumping Championship. Ken Squire and former winner Robert Ridlin calling the action from Madison Square Garden at 1 Eastern, 3 Pacific. And then, one of college football's great traditions, the 89th Army-Navy game. That's live at 2 Eastern. And the Heisman Trophy Award. Moving to the outstanding football player in the country. That's all next Saturday here on CBS Sports. Minute 24 to play. Second and three for the Chargers. Malone will keep it on the ground this time. And Gary Anderson gets up near the 30-yard line. Well, he's got to speed things up now. He's got to get up to the line and start barking out numbers or barking out colors or whatever happens to be their system. You see him doing it right now. The sooner you do that, the longer you have at the line of scrimmage to get your playoff. Well, right now they're going to stop the clock and call for a measurement because Anderson is close to first down yardage at the 30-yard uh, line. So San Francisco's running game, which has been pretty decent behind Roger Craig all year long, has been exceptional today. Or the defensive rep. Yeah, they uh, 101.5. You see a season average. They've already given that up in the first half. That's not like a San Francisco football team giving up that many rushing uh, yards, especially the first half alone. Roger Craig hasn't switched to defense, has he? Not yet. There's the huddle right there. You know, when you, when you go into the huddle, uh, some of the things you might tell your guys, remember, if you have an opportunity to get out of bounds, get out of bounds. Understand we're running short of time. Get up, get back to the huddle so that we can use our no-huddle offense. First time, first down for the Chargers at the 30-yard line. Bernstein in motion. Malone has time and goes for the end zone. Just out of bounds, Jamie Holland the intended receiver, and there's a penalty marker down in the backfield. Eric Wright was the man on Jamie Holland. This one looks like it'll back the Chargers up. Holding offense number 40. Ten yards, and it's first down. That's Gary Anderson, who stayed in to block and was caught with the hold. Well, you get a guy his size, a small back, and you ask him to block, and no matter who it was, uh, he's got his work cut out, had to hold that time. Again, coming out of the huddle, one of the first things that Mark Malone will want to do is take a look at the alignment of the safeties linebackers, try to determine what type of coverage they're playing. First and 20, with 54 seconds to play in the first half. Malone, near side, out of bounds, incomplete. Quinn Early made the reception, but came down out of bounds and the official was right there to make the call. Again, these young receivers are making some mistakes by not coming back to the ball. Look how much room he leaves himself once he makes the catch. You have to take your initial alignment out of the huddle, leave yourself enough room where you have to jump or come back for the ball and leave yourself room to the sideline. Here's another shot of it right there. He goes up for the ball, but comes down with it out of bounds. He should be further inside. Tim McHire was there to make the big hit. 48 seconds to play, second and 20. Malone, eluding part of the rush and is pulled down by 96, Danny Stubbs. And the clock has stopped with 41 seconds to play. Stubbs, the rookie out of Miami. Well, he just gets so much pressure from the outside on him, Greg. He has no, he can't sit back there and take a look at his receivers. He just has to move around. There it is right there. Running for his life. 
So the Chargers take their second time out. 41 seconds to play. We'll be back to Jack Murphy Stadium with more in just a moment. Tradition, spirit, pride, and a year's worth of bragging rights are on the line when Army and Navy square off next Saturday to fight for the Commander-in-Chief's trophy. Army is heading to the John Hancock Sun Bowl and is one victory away from deadlocking the series at 41 wins apiece. Army against Navy, 2 Eastern, 11 Pacific on CBS Sports. 41 seconds to play here in the first half. 49ers lead the Chargers 21-7. 43 yards to go and one timeout. San Diego, Malone. On third and 23 out of the shotgun. Penalty marker again in the backfield. Pass complete inside the 40. Quinn Early was the receiver, but this is another holding call on the Chargers. An interesting call coming up here for San Francisco. You bet. Ben Dreith talking it over with Ronnie Lott. Illegal hands to the face mask, number 74. They declined the penalty. It's going to be fourth down. Well, 74 is Chris Gamble out of Iowa. Well, from there, it's, uh, it's a 55-yard field goal from where the ball sits right there. You take seven yards at the holder, will get back on one knee, the 10 yards end zone with a upright start. That's 55 yards, probably out of the range of their kicker. So fourth and 17, we remind you, coming up, halftime, the NFL today, Brent Irv and Nick Buckus with scores and highlights, and then we'll be back here at Jack Murphy, Jack Murphy Stadium for all the festivities for Dan Fouts Day. Fourth and 17. Malone trying to get outside, throws complete to Bernstein. Bernstein out of bounds inside the 40, not nearly enough for the first down. And the ball goes over to the 49ers with 26 seconds on the clock. Danny Stubbs has been getting pressure on the quarterback all day long, and he did again there. Second quarter at Mile High Stadium. Denver leading the Rams 14 to 10. 49ers with an active interest in that game. You bet. Didn't give Malone much help that time. They penalized themselves. They get down in there with an opportunity to come away from some points, and they penalize themselves out of it with holding penalties. 592 total yards. Pittsburgh, a six-point winner over Kansas City. And Montana, over the middle, has Jerry Rice. And Rice is brought down at the 43. Well, they're going to they're going to try to get something out of this. Montana looked directly at the official right after the reception. They get their time out, and they're going to try to get away with something, get something out of this 20 seconds. Six-yard pickup on the play. Clock stopped now with 20 seconds. You get the feeling that everywhere Bill Walsh goes, he answers the same question as the one we put to him yesterday. Why is your team so up and down? And he just looks at us and says, I'll be darned if I know. <laughs> <laughs> said he, yeah, he did. He said he didn't really know. Uh, the problems, the quarterback controversy, uh, the controversy between he and uh, the owner, Eddie DeBartolo Jr., he says that the press uh, has made much more of that than it really is. That's a uh, pretty standard answer, though, wouldn't you think? <laughs> You are looking at the crowd here at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. 21-7, 49ers leading San Diego. 20 seconds remaining. And Montana has his man. 83 is Terry Greer, and Greer out of bounds at the 40-yard line of the Chargers with 12 seconds to go. Terry Greer in his third year out of Alabama State. Well, with 12 seconds left, they're going to have to make something happen here. They're out of field goal range where they're situated right now. Only 12 seconds left. You have to think it's going to take uh, at least half or more than that for this particular play. So they've got to make something happen right here. Mike Kofer's career-long field goal is a 52-yarder. Straight ahead, Rathman. It is Rathman near the, the 30. Stop. And Montana calls timeout with eight seconds to play. So that will get Mike Kofer onto the field. And down on the field at this moment is number 65, 
Offensive guard Jeff Bragel, second year out of Southern Cal. And they're looking at the right knee. Meanwhile, another team this afternoon clinching the playoff spot, the Chicago Bears, shutting out Green Bay. The Bears go to 11-2. Mike Tomczak playing real good for that ball club. That makes him, I think, 15-2 as a starter, which uh, that's not bad. Talk about quarterback controversies and where they might rear its ugly head. Uh, Mike Tomczak says, hey, I deserve to continue being the starting quarterback even when... Jim McMahon returns. There may be some merit to that. I mean, 15 and 2 speaks for itself. Also, uh, Jim, Jim McMahon has a terrific uh, one loss record, and, uh, but it's hard to go against what's happening. In the NFC Central Division, big win for the Chicago Bears because it helps them maintain their two game lead on the Minnesota Vikings. They don't want to go into that final Monday night contest against Minnesota one game down to the Vikings. If Minnesota wins that, they own the division. Exactly. That's what Minnesota would like to happen. They'd like to force that, force it down to that Monday night game by making up one game between now and then. Second and one. Montana thinks he can get another play in, and he does. Terry Greer out of bounds inside the 30 with four seconds to play, and now Kofer will come onto the field. A real good call. A little outside thing just to get a few more extra yards to make it just somewhat of a shorter kick for your field goal kicker. Safe pass. No chance for interception, plus it stops the clock. So Barry Helton will hold at about the 35, maybe the 36-yard line. And from 30 to 39 yards, Kofer this year is six for eight. 38, 38, 35, 35. Well, 36, they'll make this a 46-yard field goal. You bet. It is long enough, and it is perfect. That's a real nice job of those guys getting something out of a short period of time. As time expires here in the first half, Mike Kofer rams it home from 46 yards out. 49ers leading the Chargers 24 to 7. Halftime activities and more coming up right after this. Here at Jack Murphy Stadium, Dan Fouts has just been introduced to the crowd. I really appreciate the retirement of the jersey. I want to tell you that I'm very proud to be a San Diego Charger and to be able to be a fan of the San Diego Chargers and to watch them fight every Sunday now. And I want to wish you the best of luck, Mr. Spanos, in bringing these fans the type of team that we can all be proud of. I would like to take this opportunity to just just kind of walk the field again with you and get the feel of it again. It feels darn good. Now, I only have a couple of minutes to tell you what I want to say to you. There have been so many times when I've been down on this field where I wanted to tell you what a great feeling it was to be a quarterback for this football team in this stadium in front of you fans. I wanted to tell you why I threw that interception. <laughs> and why the touchdown was made. You know, I, I look around this stadium and I know, I know all of you. I know my family's up here. I know the press is up here waiting for the post-game interviews that they hated. But it was down here where it was all, what it was all about with all the guys. You know them as well as I do. I was just lucky enough to play with them all. I knew that every Sunday they would give you their best and give me their best. The Hall of Famers like Johnny Yu and Deacon Jones, the All-Pro guys, Big Louie, JJ, uh, Big Ed, 
What about that catch JJ made in that end zone, huh? What handed? Huh? And Kellen and Wes, huh? To me, it's those guys more than any honors, statistics, or one loss record. It's the guys that played on this field, that played with me, that made it so much worthwhile, made me proud to be a Charger. It's almost time for the ball clubs to come back on the field and for me to go up and join you as a fan. I'm proud to be a Charger, and I'm proud to be a Charger fan. Thank you very much. He no longer wears number 14, but Dan Fouts has not lost the ability to excite and charm the fans here at Jack Murphy Stadium. No doubt. I really enjoyed playing against him uh, in the same division for a number of years, and he's not, not a tougher competitor in the league. His numbers speak for itself. A tremendous leader that got as much out of his team as any Ladies quarterback I've ever right. seen. And like I Please said, I enjoyed competing against him. 51 times he passed for 300 or more yards in a football game. That's number one all time. Six times 400 or more. And I know you were for witness firsthand on a lot of those. Well, it was fun to watch play the way that he used his people, you know, the way that he used Chandler and the way that he used Winslow and the way that he would bring his team from behind. And because they didn't play as good a defense as they should, he always had to score a lot of points to win and put a lot of pressure on him, but he handled it very well. The numbers that he put up during a tremendous 15-year career will ensure his trip to Canton, Ohio. Yeah, it's just a matter of time. Number two all-time in attempts, number two all-time in passing yards, and number four in touchdown passes. Dan Fouts enjoying his day in the sun once again here at Jack Murphy Stadium. And we'll take a time out and return after this message and a word from your local station. And Mark Malone, meanwhile, will assume the quarterbacking chores again here in the second half. San Francisco leading 24-7. Well, San Francisco has uh, is, is made a uh, big advantage of, of big plays. Uh, they get a big interception from Ronnie Lott that leads to a score. They get uh, the big play from Montana and Jerry Rice, uh, also a score. They made big plays and, and turned the game completely around when San Diego didn't take advantage of, of field position early in the first half. 96-yard touchdown pass. Montana to Rice got San Francisco on the board. Roger Craig, a one-yard touchdown run. Mark Malone got one touchdown back with a 36-yard touchdown scamper. But Roger Craig took a two-yard toss from Joe Montana to go up 21-7, 49ers. And then Mike Kofer, a 45-yard field goal as time expired. San Francisco will receive the second-half kickoff. Ralph, or Steve DeLine, rather, teeing it up. And back to receive, 82, John Taylor, 25, Doug DeBose. And DeBose takes a bead on this one at about his own six. 15, 20, and comes down short of the 25-yard line. Randy Kirk, number 94, in on the tackle. And Joe Montana gets a few final words from Bill Walsh. Well, the big play from that guy right there, the 95, 96-yard touchdown play to Rice, really turned the situation around and let him get the rhythm and uh, the result. Uh, there it is right there. San Francisco with a touchdown, a punt, two more touchdowns and a field goal on its last five possessions in the first half. And other than the original 96-yard bomb, it's been pretty decent field position, too. 24-7 Niners, they go to work at their own 24. Montana will start with Roger Craig on the ground. Outside, across the 30, out to the 35, and enough for a first down. It wouldn't look pretty thing too much different out of San Francisco in the second half, Greg. Maybe a little bit more running. They're, they're, they're rated extremely high in, in rushing in the in the NFL, and, and that'll play a, a big part in using up as much clock as possible. But uh, they'll do the things that were good to them in the first half. Patriots and Colts 14-14. Denver leading the Rams 14-10. Philadelphia. Beat Phoenix by 10. Cleveland over Washington. 
17-13 the final in Washington and Cincinnati over Buffalo 35-21. 12-yard pickup for Craig. Again, Roger Craig. And a penalty marker flies and then drives through that one out of the backfield. This could be a late hit on the Chargers. Personal foul on number 44 for piling on with a helmet. That's 15, and that's a first down. 44 is Martin Bayless. Well, there's a look at it right there. You see Craig cutting up in the hole, and they, they make the play. He's going to be down. His forward progress is stopped right there. This is quite obvious. And there comes the spear right there. Good call. First down for the 49ers now. Moved across midfield and down to the San Diego 46-yard line. Craig and Rathman in the backfield behind Montana. Play action. Montana for Jerry Rice. Incomplete at the 10-yard line. 22, Gil Bird catching him from behind. I really don't think Joe liked where the position where he threw the ball. Looks like Jerry Rice had to stop, break his momentum, and try to come uh, back for the ball a little bit. See with this ball, it's not a well-thrown ball, but watch, he had to stop right there. He had to stop right there and kind of overruns it. I don't think Joe's happy with that throw. Shouldn't be. Montana had completed nine in a row until that incompletion. Second and ten. Bill Bird had his hands full with Jerry Rice now. To about the 41. Gary Plummer with the stop. Pick up a five on the play. And it'll be second and five. More scores from around the league. The Jets, a winner over Miami. Pittsburgh beat the Chiefs. And Atlanta beating Tampa Bay 17-10. Chicago clinches a playoff spot, 16-0 if the Packers fail to score again. 24-7 49ers. Montana for Rice. Complete inside the 10. Touchdown! The Montana to Rice combination clicks again, this time for 41 yards. He beat Sam Seal, the cornerback on that side. You know, this wasn't the best thrown ball that Montana's ever thrown, Greg, but it works because the defensive back loses sight of where the ball is in, relation, in le relationship to the receiver. He's got his back turned. The ball is short. Jerry Rice, seeing the ball, makes the adjustment for the touchdown. Rice follows up the 96-yard touchdown reception in the first quarter with a 41-yarder here in the third, and the Niners are up 30-7. to Kofer looking to make it 31. And he does. 13 and a half minutes to play here in the third quarter, and the Niners have taken complete control. It's 31-7, San Francisco. Welcome back to San Diego, everyone. Of the three of us, guess which one of us has thrown the least interceptions in his career? <laughs> Greg Gumbel along with Ken Stabler and Dan Fouts. Congratulations to you, Dan. What was your feeling down there? Well, it's really hard to put into words. It was just, uh, I had the hair on the back of my neck was standing up, and I'm still kind of shaken by it all. It's a tremendous feeling to have the support and, and the warmth uh, from the fans. One of the things that I thought was very pertinent was how much you would like to uh, have explained those interceptions to the fans. Well, you know, when you throw over 200 like I did, there's a lot of explaining to do. <laughs> Kenny, you know the feeling. Well, you know, I, I, I always want to tell Dan that I really enjoyed competing against you and watching you play, and, and I, I don't think I've ever seen a quarterback that had as much courage and as much guts and, uh, and, and got more out of his people than, than you did. And, uh, uh, this thing today, uh, d deservedly so, was tremendous, and uh, congratulations to you. Well, thank you, Kenny. That's a great thing about pro football is the competition involved, and, and the people you meet, not only on your own team, but as you travel throughout the league, uh, getting to play against some of the great players. And uh, every game the Chargers ever played against the Raiders uh, was a historical one, it seemed like, and I think that you maybe came out <laughs> on top one too many times. Well, I was blessed with playing with a tremendous team, and uh, like I said, I enjoyed the competition with you. You bet. One of the things that uh, uh, the 49ers bring up is uh, a memorable game that you played against them in, what, 82, was it? 
Yeah, we got uh, Joe Montana and I got tangled up in quite a, uh, a battle that day. This, this right is here is part of our complicated passing attack, Dan, that we had for you guys. It was a real sophisticated passing game. See this right here? Yeah, I that's saw it only too well that day. You did it, Kenny. Uh, you know, you know when you really have made it in the National Football League, when the next year they make a rule to change something you did the we previous worked, year. We worked on that play all week. You bet you did. I know you did. Just tremendous uh, cooperation. Congratulations. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you, fellas. Back to live action. 13:08 to play here in the third quarter. Danny, thank you for joining us. Good luck to you. Our CBS Sports colleague, Dan Fouts. Number 14, retired. He really did have a great career. Oh, yeah, tremendous career. His numbers speak for themselves. Meanwhile, second and nine. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Malone's got his hands full. For San Diego at his own 41. That's Bernstein in motion. And to the far side, throwing into a traffic pattern, but completing the pass to Jamie Holland. Jamie Holland did a nice job that time of putting his body between the ball and the defender coming back for the ball, which they're taught to do. Young receivers have got a lot to learn in this offense, but they're a talented group, but extremely young. Jamie Holland, second-year man from Ohio State. Third and inches. And San Francisco has done pretty well, certainly compared to San Diego this time of the day in the third quarter. Third and inches. The ball at midfield. Spencer in motion. Malone loses his footing as he hands off. Barry Redden carrying the ball, and they are short of first down yardage. What do you do here, Coach? Well, I don't think they have anything to lose. I mean, when, you, when you're four and eight in your division and the likelihood of playoffs is extremely remote because of the variables that has to happen for them to get in, I mean, what do you have to lose? Let's, let's, let's play. Let's go for it. Al Saunders thinking right along with you. Fourth and two is what Malone is looking at here at his own 49. Spencer and Redden are in the backfield. Redden in motion. Spencer gets the football. Looks like he's got the first down to about the 48. And that'll keep the fans on your side for another five minutes or so. Yeah, five minutes or so <laughs> until, until the next play. But that's one thing that you have to be careful with when you have a team that's basically out of the race. They're not mathematically eliminated. But for all practical purposes, they are. They can do anything they want to. They can gamble. So you have to be careful with a team like this. But uh, the, the, the Niners have it in hand. From Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego, Greg Gumbel along with Ken Stabler. 10.30 to play here in the third quarter. 49ers lead 31-7. San Diego trying to do something about that. Malone goes to the air. Going to go for it all downfield. Incomplete intended for Jamie Holland. 22, Tim McHire was with him stride for stride. On the CBS Sports Wire, Chicago Lee beating Green Bay 16 0. Chicago win the playoffs. Atlanta over Tampa Bay by seven. And in the NFC Central, Chicago maintains its two game lead on the Minnesota Vikings. Detroit and Tampa Bay at three and ten, and the Packers fall to two and eleven on the year. Tough one for Lindy and Fonda. It's been tough all year. Second and ten. Rolling up top again. This time he's got his man, Anthony Miller. And Miller across the 40 to about the 39-yard line. It'll leave him about a yard shy of first down yardage. Pickup of nine. It'll be third and one. More scores from around the NFL. Pittsburgh over Kansas City. 16 to 10 at Three River Stadium. Denver extending its lead now in the third quarter to 28-10 over the Rams. And in the AFC West, the division no one seems to want. Denver, the Raiders, and Seattle all at 6-6. Six six. San Diego at 4-8. In the NFC West, New Orleans two-game lead over the Rams and the 49ers. And Atlanta, a winner today, now at 5-8. Malone on the rollout his man Tim Spencer Spencer inside the 30 to about the 27 26 yard line 
Torrey Nixon, number 20, making the tackle for the 49ers. Well, they have nothing to lose, Greg, than gamble like that. Play pass on third down, fourth down, whatever it takes. What better way to get your, your receivers the experience that they need? All the young players' experience. There's a little play pass. They have an eligible lineman, number 60, who goes deep. They put number 43 out in the flat, dump it off to him, and nice call. So the Chargers have now moved it to the San Francisco 26-yard line and another first down. To the near side, the bottom of your screen is 83, Anthony Miller. Below. Over the middle, intended for Miller. Penalty marker flies on the incompletion. I think they're going to get Eric Wright with this one. Twenty-one. Eric Wright was the man covering. Defense pass interference number twenty-one. That's a first down. When you put it all together, you put Anthony Miller's speed along with Eric Wright's groin injuries, and it should not add up. No, it didn't. Uh, but he has a pretty good coverage here. He's all over him. It's extremely tight coverage. He just gets to the ball a little bit sooner than he should. Eric Wright struggling with groin injuries uh, all year. First down now at the thirteen. The Chargers are driving. Spencer and Redden in the San Diego backfield. Bernstein in motion. The pitch for Spencer. Spencer stacked up close to the 10. Michael Walter, number 99, making the stop after a pickup of three. At Philadelphia, the Eagles beating the Cardinals 31-21. Washington, a loser at home to Cleveland, 17-13. And the NFC East looks like this. Philadelphia at 8-5. The Giants playing New Orleans tonight. Johnny. Phoenix a loser. Washington a loser. And Dallas a loser on Thanksgiving Day. Philadelphia looking for a little help from the Saints tonight. Second down and eight. And Malone will throw for it. Over the middle. Out of the backfield. Gary Anderson to the five. And we see Malone going back to that short passing game, which was so successful for them early on. Exactly. Let those linebackers clear out of there if it's a zone. But in this case, probably man-to-man -man down in the scoring territory. You get Gary Anderson on a linebacker. That's what you're looking for. Chris Gamble, number 74, is in at a left tackle position. And he is an eligible receiver here on third and two. Spencer and Redden in the backfield. Another play pass, maybe. It is. Malone on the rollout. Running out of room into the end zone and overthrows Timmy Spencer. Now the field goal unit comes on to the, onto the field. Are we in the same situation here as we were at midfield? You say we had nothing to lose back then. What about now? I don't think we had nothing, anything to lose here. You know, like I said, the, 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 the playoff uh, possibilities are extremely remote with all the things that have to happen. Uh, what better way than to, than to score points, score touchdowns, go for it. Get this crowd going with you. Steve DeLine lines up. 7-12 to play here in the third quarter. Chargers looking to put another three on the board. And they do. But the fans aren't exactly pleased. 7.09 to play, third quarter. Chargers add three more and still trail San Francisco 31 to 10. We'll be back. Horses next Saturday, Kenny. The Mercedes Horse Jumping Championship, 1 o'clock Eastern Time, 3 o'clock Pacific here on CBS Sports. Hey, we look forward to that one. Then one of college football's great traditions, the 89th Army-Navy game, followed by the Heisman Trophy Award. That's all next Saturday on CBS Sports. On the kickoff, John Taylor to the near side, across the 25 to about the 28-yard line, where he is hit and hit hard. Denver and Los Angeles, the Broncos look to be pulling away. Let's check in with Brent Musburger in New York. Greg, that's exactly what's happening. John Elway is having a big day, and this is good news for San Francisco 49er fans. If the 49ers have to settle for a wild card, remember their big win earlier this year over the New York Giants. It now becomes critical. Let's go back now to Greg. All right, thank you, Brent. Elway and company rebounding well from the shutout last week. 
Here at 6.58 to play in the third quarter. Four wide receivers in at Montana to throw. Under the pressure and goes down at about his own 22. 91, Leslie O'Neill registers the second sack of the day for San Diego. You know, Greg, as fragile as Montana's been and with all the injuries that he's had, uh, does the quarterback start thinking about maybe taking him out right now? Get Steve Young in. They've got the game well in hand at 31 to 10. A running game would probably favor them. A running quarterback, it uses up more time on the clock. Uh, I might consider replacing him right now. And what Bill Walsh would say, isn't it a little early, Ken? Well, you know, 31 to 10, the defense is playing extremely well. I, I don't think so. Four wide receivers from Montana on second and long. Pumps a couple of times. Rathman, another one-handed grab, and out to the 35-yard line. It's another little ho-hum one-hander. Gary Plummer, Sam Seal, closing in on the tackle, and he liked it. Now Montana gives the first look downfield, and they, get, they play in a zone uh, back in this particular part of the field. He dumps the ball off to Rathman. He knows he'll snag it one-handed. Now, there's the guy that I'm talking about right here. He runs the ball uh, an awful lot as a quarterback, which works on the clock. Well, that dude in there. Looks like he may be loosened up. Who knows? He looks a little antsy, doesn't he? Third and three. Montana will throw for it over the middle. Has his receiver, John Taylor, who's carried back a couple of yards by Elvis Patterson. But not before he picked up the first down. Well, they've been giving up the big plays to Rice and company and those guys. And when those defensive backs get them up in the air like that and they get an opportunity to put a little extra on them, you can bet they're going to do it. Montana. Pretty good history against San Diego. Not real bad this afternoon. No. Craig and Rathman behind Montana. First down. 49ers at their own 40-yard line with 5.15 to play here in the third quarter. Craig hard twice at about the 42 and a couple of fisticuffs break out on the field oh i want the concession 74 is steve wallace and 71 is mike charles wallace of the 49ers charles of the chargers 74 and 71 personal fouls we're gonna wipe them off but they're still personal fouls Referee Ben Dreif kind of saying, we won't send them to jail, but we won't forget it either. I didn't see Ben really jumping between them either, did you? Were you the peacemaker type? No, me? <laughs> Clock starts again. Five minutes to play, third quarter. Second and seven for Montana and company. Double tight end now, Ron Heller and Brent Jones for the 49 Montana with time being chased by Charles. Get out of bounds. And out of bounds just shy of midfield. And upset is Vince e. Glenn. I don't think they protected the quarterback quite so much when you were playing, did they? I know. I know. How well I know. throws it against the Chargers, you be the judge. Well, here he is right here. Now, you know Joe's not going to cut it back into all that beef. Look at those, look at the size of those guys. You know he's going to get ball, get out of bounds with it at 31 to 10. It's the only thing to do. I don't think the push right here is really necessary, although it really wasn't all that bad. Vincey Glenn did appear to be pushed a little bit from behind as well. Ben Black a little closer to the action, though, made the call. 441 to play, third quarter. 38-yard line. Here comes Roger Craig. No penalty marker is down. Craig with a gain of about two, and we'll check the flag. And this one will be against the 49ers. Illegal motion against San Francisco. Illegal motion on the right guard. Five-yard penalty, and it's first down. That would be number uh, 62, Guy McIntyre. It was kind of a tray, an off-tackle uh, counter-type thing where they, they pull the right guard and pull the right tackle. Those guys have to cheat a little bit to get out there in front of a quick back like Roger Craig, and he just moved a little bit too soon. 
Make it first and 15 for San Francisco now. The ball for San Diego, 43. Quick one for Montana, and somebody got a hand on it. Keith Browner. Keith Browner was in, in a hurry on Joe Montana. We haven't heard much about Browner this afternoon. We really haven't. It's been a big play uh, linebacker for them. Here you see right here, 57, Keith Browner right there at the top of your screen. Uh, whether it's a blown assignment, who knows, because you don't know the, what the pass protection situation was. Whatever. You can't let a guy like Montana or any quarterback, you can't let anybody free to knock him around that way. Last week, Browner picked off a loose fumble, carried it 25 yards, flipped it back to Sam Seal, who took it the rest of the way, 50 yards more. 75-yard play in all. Second and 15. Montana to this side. Rathman again. Rathman breaks a tackle inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. Rathman's looks good as a receiver today. Made a couple of tough one-handed catches. Primarily a blocker for Roger Craig. A good outlet type receiver uh, versus uh, the zone type defense. Here it is right here. You're playing safety. Here's what you're looking at. Montana delivers the ball right on the spot. He breaks the tackle right there. Number 48, Pat Miller breaks that tackle. Here he comes for more. Number 22, Bird finally gets him down. Roger Craig has been getting all the notoriety for the pass receiving out of the backfield, but Rathman, three receptions, 35 yards today, and two of them over the one hand of the right. Montana will throw again. Over the middle. Incomplete. He was looking for Jerry Rice. Vincy Glenn got a hand on it, and not a moment too soon. Good idea by San Francisco right here. Try to get Rice in the seam. You're playing safety right there. Here, here he is right here. They try to get him right between the seam of Vincy Glenn, number 25, and number 22, Gilbert, but they react to it. Vincy Glenn in his third year out of Indiana State. Those who've had a problem with Joe Montana's arm. That one didn't look too bad. Did he? He's, he's thrown the ball extremely well today. He's thrown the deep ball well today, although one of them hung pretty well. Second and 10 from the 27. Roger Craig, left side. 20, 15, knocked out of bounds. 48, Pat Miller came over to make the hit, but not before. Craig picked up another 49er first down on a 15-yard pickup. You know, Greg, you have to like the way that San Francisco is playing, especially this particular time of year. You go with three games left in the season. They're getting Montana probably as healthy as he's been in a long time. Their running game is going extremely well with, with Roger Craig. Rice's ankle seems to be better off. You have to like the way this, this team looks, especially this late in the year. And again, we point out, San Francisco will have a lot to say about how it finishes up because it will play New Orleans, the Rams, and the Falcons the last three weeks of the season. It's in their hands. Craig. Across the 10 to about the 7. Five-yard pickup. And some pretty good blocking out in front of Roger Craig. They have run the ball extremely well today and all season long by evidence of being ranked third, I think, in rushing. And that's because they've gotten away from their passing game and put more emphasis on their running game due to the injuries to Montana and Rice. I told you at the outset, Roger Craig needed 117 yards to set a new rushing record. He needs 60 more. Second and five from the seven. Flawless blocking out in front of Roger Craig made that an easy seven yard jaunt, and the 49ers add some more. Well, here it is, and you get those guards. You get McIntyre, number 62, coming out there. Number 61, Jesse Sapolu, coming out there and leading Craig, and he has a nose for the goal line when he gets down in there. Touchdown. Another angle of it is just a reverse handoff. You see McIntyre, number 62, coming out around the right end. You see number 79, Harris Barton pulling up through there. Nice job of blocking by the offensive line. 65, Jeff Briegel also throwing a key block on Craig's touchdown joint. Kofer adds the extra point. And with 2.32 to play here in the third quarter, the 49ers reestablish the big lead. It's 38-10. The best players in the land are out to capture the most coveted honor in college football. Find out who will win the Heisman next Saturday on CBS Sports. 
With 2.32 left in the third quarter, it would appear Steve Young's time has come as he warms up for the 49ers. Next possession, Greg Gummel along with Ken Stabler. Joe Montana taking the Niners 72 yards in 12 plays. And Roger Craig going the last seven yards. From the four-yard line, it's Jamie Holland for San Diego. To the 30. Still breaking tackles. Up close to the 30, the 29-yard line. Sam Kennedy, number 57, making the stop for the 49ers. And onto the field again comes Mark Malone. Well, since they changed quarterbacks so much, Greg, the San Diego offense we're talking about right now, what better time than to get your timing down with the three young wide receivers that they have in Malone? 2.21 to play. We'll take a timeout and come back to Jack Murphy Stadium right after this. Back in San Diego, this is Greg Gumbel. Actually, this isn't Greg Gumbel. This is uh, some, of the, uh, <laughs> some of the inmates at the... Uh, San Diego Zoo wearing the famous black and silver. It's a Raider look. uniform. What was that team? It's a Raider uniform. Uh-oh. They're the colors of those mild-mannered good guys from the Bay Area. From the man who should know. Along with Ken Stabler. First down. Mark Malone throwing. Intercepted. Tim McKire. And Malone is down. And a penalty marker is down right next to him. We might have a hit the quarterback in the head type deal right here. Ben Drive pointing, pointing all over the place. Direct in traffic. Number 99 on a defense, hit the quarterback in the face. That's 15 yards and first down. Got a boy, Ben. Michael Walter with the penalty and personally offending Ken Stabler. Can't hit those guys in the head. No, he doesn't like it. So instead of the turnover, it's a San Diego first down. Moving it out to the 45-yard line. And Mark Malone took a pretty good shot. But it won't keep him from putting it up again. Far side. This one is picked off. And again, it's Tim LaPire. If at first you don't succeed. something like that happens. If, if you take note of what San Diego's done on offense today, they have not thrown the ball down the field. They haven't thrown the deep routes. They haven't thrown the ball down deep to make the defensive backs respect the deep uh, throw. Watch the defensive back just sit. When he gets out of his back up, back up, back up, then he just sits right there, breaks on the ball because he's not respecting anything deep. They need to throw the ball down the field so you can throw the ball underneath. Steve Young is in at quarterback as the 49ers take over at the San Diego 43-yard line. And here comes Roger Craig. Craig busts it across the 35 to about the 32. Roger Craig, 17 yards in the first half, and he just picked up 11 to give him 60 here in the second half. Why is that? What happened to their running game in the first half? I think uh, I think why he has his success in the second half, uh, Greg, as opposed to the first half. The first half, they wanted to come out and throw the ball and get Montana in that rhythm, which they did. And the reason you have success in the second half of a football game is because you set it all up with your passing game, plus the adjustments that you'll go in and make at halftime. 78 yards rushing for Roger Craig on the day. First down, and Young will throw. Far side, Jerry Rice. Hit and brought down by Pat Miller, number 48. Steve Young on now in relief of Joe Montana. Anybody who wants to say that these guys are at odds with each other are just wrong. They're friends. However, they have been making a big thing of a so-called controversy. They really have. I think it makes good copy around it. No matter what the, the quarterback controversy or what city, what ball club, what quarterbacks are involved, it makes good copy for the, for the news media, for the beat writers. And I think there's more made out of it in the papers than really exist. There is no doubt this man wants to play, though. Here comes Roger Craig again. Ooh. Craig across the 25. And with 38 seconds to play, we'll get another update from the NFL today in New York. Once again, Brent Musburger. Brent? All right, Greg. Everything that uh, Denver is doing today is turning out right. Dorsett throws the ball. 
to a wide open Sammy Winder. And this is a good combination now as far as fans of the San Francisco 49ers are concerned. Now let's go back to Greg. Thank you, Brent. Tony Dorsett showing that most anybody can be a quarterback and throw that football. <laughs> Nothing to it. Just, just stand back there and throw it. Babe Laufenberg warming up on the San Diego sideline as time winds down here in the third quarter. 38 to 10. San Francisco leading the Chargers. And we'll be back to Jack Murphy Stadium for fourth quarter action and more in just a moment. Welcome back to San Diego for the fourth quarter on third and three. Steve Young as the 49ers at the San Diego 25. Roger Cray first down over the 20 to about the 18 yard line. Pickup of seven on the play. On the sports wire, Brent Musburger told you about Denver running all over the Rams 35 to 17. New England and the Colts in a 21 all tie in the fourth quarter at the Hoosier Dome. Here, the 49ers lead 38 to 10 and have a first down at the Charger 18. Raffner pulls his way across the right side and a little bit more pushing and shoving between Gary Plummer and Brent Jones. Pick up a four on the play. This is Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. Along with Ken Stabler, I'm Greg Gumbel, and 49ers have pretty much owned this football game and are looking for their first win ever here in San Diego. You know, you, you look all the way back to the first quarter, Greg, when they had, San, they had San Francisco pinned back in their own territory. They turned the ball back to San Diego at midfield twice in the first two series of downs. They didn't capitalize on it. They kept San Francisco still pinned in, and the big play from Rice, a 96-yard touchdown, turns everything completely around. Second and six for the 49ers. Craig. Nowhere. 51, Cedric Figaro in on the tackle. Eagles, a 10-point winner over Phoenix today. Cleveland, a road win at Washington. And Cincinnati taking advantage of four Buffalo turnovers to beat the Bills. Third and six from the 14. Young, quick pass over the middle, incomplete, intended for John Taylor. Time now to go back to New York. Let's get another update with Brent Burke. Must Burke, Brent. Brent. <laughs> right, Greg. Here's a 54-yard touchdown pass. Everett pulls out. He's got Ellard. Ellard pulls away, but it's uh, too little. Too late. 35-17. Back to you, Brent. Brent Musburger. Brent Musburger. Brent Musburger. <laughs> 12.51 to play. Fourth quarter. Mike Kofer on to attempt a field goal from the 22-yard line. This will be a 32-yard field goal attempt. Barry Helton will hold. Long enough and straight enough. 49ers put three more on the board, and this one's turning into a runaway with 12.47 to play. 41-10, 49ers. This NFL game summary is sponsored by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. 12.47. Welcome back to Jack Murphy Stadium here in San Diego, where the San Francisco 49ers have taken complete control. 41 to 10 is the score with 12.47 to play here in the fourth quarter. Jerry Rice has had a heck of a day. 171 yards and two touchdowns, including a 96-yarder in the first quarter. And I think we have to go back to what you mentioned a few moments ago, Kenny, about lost opportunities early on for the Chargers. First series of downs, they're down inside the 10-yard line. They fumble the ball away. The second two series, they get the ball at midfield, Greg. They come away with nothing. And then Montana hits Rice with a big one. Those two or three things early turn the game completely around. Al Saunders will readily admit with a young team, as he has here in San Diego, that'll happen. to about the 25. 
Jamie Holland. Well, we got the babe coming in here now. If I was the babe and if I were Jerry Rome, I think that I would work with my young wide receivers and the offensive line. Their offense has struggled all year long. It's a good time to air the ball out. They have nothing to lose. Let's get these young guys and teach them something under game type situations. Babe Laufenberg started weeks one through six. He's saying, let's get out of here before we get killed. <laughs> No, a guy like that, he wants to play well, you know, and he wants to, he wants to do well in this type situation. And, and a quarterback likes to throw the ball. And, he, and what, what perfect time, like I said, to work with his people. He's going to start right off the bat with a short one over the middle to Bernstein. And Bernstein out to about the 32. And as a quarterback in this particular situation, at 41 to 10 in the fourth quarter, I think you would expect all zones and call a zone type of offensive game plan. Meanwhile, Mark Malone finished 17 of 32 for 136 yards and a couple of interceptions. A second down. Laufenberg, penalty marker down. Laufenberg going to run for it and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe another yard before Pierce Holt made the stop. And we'll check the flag and referee Ben Drive. Holding Chargers. It's also a very good time to evaluate offensive linemen, Greg. The Offense, hardest, offensive the holding number 66. Ten yards and a second down. That's center Dan Rosado. Well, it's, like I said, it's a good time to evaluate your offensive lineman. The hardest time to throw the ball is when you're behind. Everybody in the stadium knows that you're going to throw the ball. Defensive linemen don't respect any kind of running game. They're going to tee off. So you can evaluate your people. Big blow to the Chicago Bears. They lose Richard Dent with a fractured leg. Darren Flutie is into the lineup, the rookie out of Boston College. And brother of New England quarterback Doug Flutie. Here's Darren Flutie. Second and 14. Laufenberg has Flutie. Flutie across the 35 and close to first down yardage. Flutie does not have the exceptional speed that Anthony Miller and Quinn Early and Jamie Holland has, but he does okay here. It, a, a player like this can be extremely valuable. He's a Freddie Bolitnikoff type player as we had, a guy who is a good possession receiver, runs good, precise routes, a smart, intelligent player that's got the good hands. First down, 11.05 to play in the fourth quarter. On the blitz, Laufenberg is taken down, and the pass is incomplete. And Daryl Pollard came on the blitz for the 49ers and hit Laufenberg hard. Next time you come back, bring my head back yeah, with you. Head and arm. Well, you wonder why so many quarterbacks are getting banged up around the league. There's more pressure being put on a quarterback than ever before by different people. Impact players like Andre Bruce. They're bringing corners and safeties. People just like this. And quarterbacks are taking a tremendous pounding because they're getting hit by smaller people going at a higher rate of speed. That makes sense? No. no. They come out of MIT. Second and ten. Offenberg. It's his man, and it's Flutie again. Flutie again eludes tacklers, and out near the 50-yard line, and a penalty marker is down in the backfield. 12-yard pickup. Here's Ben Number Wright. 94, San Francisco went low on a quarterback's knees, way low. 94 is Charles Haley. No. 15 yards. First down. And Drive letting us in on a little of the conversation. Here's the call. Well, out of shotgun, of course, Charles Haley leads that team in sack. Looks like he's starting to fall a little bit. Looks like he tries to avoid uh, hitting him uh, around the knee area. Uh, a shaky call. A rare moment where Ken Stabler is giving a defensive lineman the benefit of the doubt. Maybe we better tape that. <laughs> Mr. Haley has done all right holding up his share of the deal. Ten and a half sacks so far. Clock continues to run 10.45 to play here in the fourth quarter. And Lockenberg throwing on every down now. Haley again in on him. Pass over the middle incomplete. Anthony Miller. Ball about five yards behind him. And I think uh, 
the babe was looking at number 94 on his way in on the left side. Well, it has a way of happening to quarterbacks. You start getting bounced around. You start hearing those guys and feeling those guys around you, and they make you hurry everything. They make you throw the ball before you're ready, before the route develops, and uh, something like that uh, certainly can result. Charles Haley still uh, still pleading his case for referee Ben Drive. Those ten and a half sacks, but Haley been without one in his previous three games. Second and ten. Here come the Niners over the middle. Bernstein across the thirty and down to about the twenty-seven yard line. That'll be about a yard or two shy of a first down. So on Monday night, the 49ers had showed signs of putting things together, and they don't look, don't give us reason to say otherwise this afternoon. Their defense has played well. They've come up with a big turnover. Ronnie Lott had an interception, had a fumble recovery, and their offense has played extremely well. Two yards needed for a first down. Walkenberg running for his life, but gets out of bounds inside the first down marker at the 25. Walker. 96, Danny Stubbs in hot pursuit. Well, as you said, the defense has played well. The offense has played well here. They, they put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. And, and Loffenberg throwing in the toughest situation that a quarterback can throw in. Where everybody knows it, and he's just running for his life. Get out of bounds. Protect yourself. Try to get a first down. In Danny Stubbs, you've got six foot four, 260 pounds of muscle coming after you. Which will make you look for that yard marker. First down, San Diego, now to the San Francisco 25. Offenberg on a straight draw, quarterback draw. First down at the 15 to the 10. Inside the 10-yard line before he is brought down. Number 20, Torrey Nixon coming over from the defensive slot to make the stop after 15 yards. Designed quarterback draw. Throwing the ball every down, playing zone, linebackers dropping out of there. Good call, except the fact that you get your quarterback knocked around a little bit. I'm not sure you'll see any other team with two quarterbacks that will take off and run the way Mark Malone and Babe Laufenberg have this afternoon. You bet. I wouldn't look for Montana to do it much. Unless there's a lot of money on the line where they're playing in a playoff game or a tight division game. Here's a replay, replay of it right here. Design, quarterback, draw. Try to push the nose tackle to one side. He runs to the other side. You get whatever you can out of it. 6'3", 205 pounds. Dave Laufenberg will come out of the shotgun for the first time now. Has time. Throws in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Jamie Holland, at the goal line. Tim McHire on the covering. That time, the receiver did come back. Exactly. Work back to the ball the way that you should, but you've got to catch the ball. They must have had they must have seven or eight drop passes today. And that's not youth. That's just hands. You have to work on catching the ball. Rothenberg delivers the ball right on target. He's working his way back to the ball. Watch him. He's coming back to the ball. Bounces off his head here. Second and ten from the ten. And that's where you wind up when that happens. Watch him from the sideline. Early split to the left. Walkenberg throws under heavy pressure. Intended for Gary Anderson. Tom Holmo, number 46, came right up the middle to put the pressure on Laufenberg. Safety blitz by, Hol by Holmo for coming right up the middle of a safety blitz. Made him throw the ball before he would like. San Diego has racked up 311 yards, but they have not been at the most opportune times. And they, they haven't been at the opportune times. They didn't make the most of their field position early in the game, and the turnovers cost them. The penalty that fumbled down inside the 10 and Malone's interceptions. Third down from the 10. Here comes the blitz. He got it away just before 49. Jeff Fuller steamrolled it. Again, it's another blitz. A strong safety this time. They bring Fuller. Got a penalty on this one, Greg. This one looks to be against the Chargers, as Ben Dreith will consult the Holding 49ers. number 66. They declined the penalty. It'll be fourth down. That's center Dan Rosado.
26, Lionel James onto the field to replace Barry Redden on fourth down from the 10. And look at the players from both benches bunch up at the sidelines to watch this one. Intended for Flutie. And Tom Holmo was there to make a big hit. Holmo along with Daryl Pollard combined to stop the Chargers at the goal line. So with eight minutes, 40 seconds to play, the 49ers will take over. Forty-one ten. 49ers in the lead. We'll take a timeout and come back to Jack Murphy Stadium in just a moment. San Diego Drive dies at the 10-yard line, and the 49ers take over first and 10. Steve Young at quarterback with the Niners leading at 41 to 10. Sydney stopped after uh, a pickup of about two or three and made Laufenberg on the sideline. Thought he should have had a touchdown pass there a couple of moments ago. Well, it may be 41 to 10, but you, you don't think this guy doesn't want to win, is not a competitor, and is having fun. Watch, watch his reaction to the, to the pass. Oh, I wish he'd catch that ball. Four out of nine for 41 yards. Meanwhile, the clock continues to roll. 8.05 to play here in the fourth quarter. And the 49ers tuning up big for the stretch run. And it's all in their hands. We've said earlier, they play within their division the last three games, and so they can, uh, they can determine their own destiny. 49ers burn a timeout as uh, they were running out of time, and uh, they weren't about to get a playoff. So the clock stops with 7.54 to play. We'll take a timeout, too, and be right back. Kenny, our spotter, Gary Lynn, says that is Rice in Montana, no doubt in his mind. I think that's what you look like when you have to play on Sunday after a real tough Saturday night, I suppose. <laughs> well, I suppose. Then that wouldn't be Rice in Montana. No, no, those guys are in. Second down. San Francisco, 7.54 to play here in the fourth quarter. Second and six. Young will throw. He has time. Flips it to Sydney. And Sydney out over the 20 and to the 23, and that's a first down. There's big Lee Williams with 10 sacks. The leader of this team and the AFC sack leader. He had a pretty interesting comment several weeks ago, Kenny. Here's what he said. I try to put my helmet into the middle of the quarterback's chin. Mm, Excedrin headache number 300. He also says, pick him up off the ground. That's awful nice of him. And then punish him into the turf. <laughs> Makes for a slow Monday. Big Lee Williams. Interview, interviewed him yesterday, and he looked at me like a cat looking at a canary. <laughs> he smells quarterback blood. <laughs> 49 keep it on the ground. That's what I would look for. The, cl the clock is certainly on their side, and more importantly, the scoreboard at 41 to 10, and so they'll just keep the ball on the ground, throw the ball when they have to, and uh, get out of here and uh, keep the injuries as, uh, to a minimum, uh, hopefully. 49ers go over 400 total yards. They come in third in total offense in the NFL, averaging over 363. So they'll improve that average a bit this afternoon. Well, I think the thing that they will be happiest about, Greg, is the fact that Montana has put two back-to-back, -back very consistent, high-percentage games together, and that along with Craig's play and their defense play, I think they're peaking just about right to, to do well in their division. Second and five from the 27. DuBose. Right side, diving for the first down marker and is out of bounds just across the 30. Cedric Figaro over there to make the stop. One of the things I, we asked the 49ers yesterday is, 
about coming back after a Monday night contest. A couple of them said they like it. Yeah, they said they liked it because it just kept things rolling. Because of the short week, they had to hurry up everything, but you don't lose any momentum. The injuries don't have enough, uh, as much time to heal, of course, but still there's not that lull, say, of playing like on Thanksgiving and having 10 days. They want to just keep things going because they're playing well now. Bill Walsh for one year, 1976, offensive coordinator here in San Diego. Sees his team with third and one now. Straight ahead, first down yardage for Doug DuBose, and a penalty marker is down. Five-yard face mask on number 75, end of the run. That'll be a first down. 75 is Joe Phillips in his third year out of SMU. And some of the Charger frustrations are showing, except maybe there. You know, that group right there is, uh, you have to say, that. look at his hair on this guy right here. He, um, he spent all of his bonus money on food, not a haircut. That's <laughs> Les Miller. Third year out of Southern Cal. He's only six foot seven, 310 pounds. Your Coke machine with a head on it? Would you like to have him coming home hungry every night? Oh. First down from 40. Play action. Young eludes the rush. 45. Out of bounds at midfield and a first down. That's his strong suit, is the ability to run. Make things happen running around. He won a big game for him against Minnesota with a, a terrific run. He ran through the, just about the entire Minnesota defense. Uh, great presence to know where the marker is. Get out of bounds, protect himself, and keep the, keep the drive going. Remember all those nice things that uh, Lee Williams said about doing to a quarterback? Mm -hmm. Well, Steve Young just barely avoided all of that in the backfield on that run. I kind of had his eye on you in the office there just to make sure you wouldn't make any quick moves. I kind of had my eye on him, too. <laughs> <laughs> 5.32 to play fourth quarter. First down. DeVoe. Across the 45 before he shoved back. 48, Pat Miller in on the tackle for San Diego. A pickup of five. Chicago, a 16-0 winner over the Packers today, clinching themselves a playoff spot. Denver, 35-17 over the Los Angeles Rams in the fourth quarter. In the Central Division, Chicago with a two-game lead over Minnesota. And Minnesota still hoping to close the gap before the season-ending game against the Bears. Detroit a loser on Thanksgiving Day. Tampa Bay losing today as well as Green Bay. Next highlight in those lives is the draft. Huh? <laughs> That's the next high spot. You know, the thing you like about this offense right here, Greg, is the fact that they've taken the ball on about their 10 or 15-yard line and done this very thing right here. Run the football, take the ball all the way down the field, use up the clock. When you've got a game in hand, that's what you like out of your offense. Penalty here, penalty there, and some good blocking up front, and they're all the way down now to the San Diego 40-yard line. Pick up a four on the play by DuBose, and it's third and one. Eagles won today. Washington lost. So in the NFC East, Philadelphia is 8-5. Phoenix falls to 7-6. The Giants in New Orleans play tonight. Washington falls below 500. And Dallas is in the Troy Aikman Derby. Yeah. Third and one. Clock continues to run. 3.55 to play here in the fourth quarter. Sydney, first down. Cincinnati, a winner over Buffalo this afternoon. And the Jets beating Miami, 38-34. Indianapolis with a three-point lead over the Patriots. That's in the fourth quarter. Take a look at the standings in the AFC Central, where Cincinnati continues to rule the roost. A game up on Houston. Cleveland with 8-5 in the East. Buffalo suffering their second loss of the year. New England, 7-5. and five. Indianapolis, 6-6. Six and six. The Jets, 6-6-1. Six, six and, and Miami, 5-8. and eight. 25 is DeBose. DeBose with room around the right side, and he could go. Touchdown. Real nice run. 
37 yard gallop by Doug DuBose. Well, they've been doing this all year. They're number three in rushing, or number three in offense in the league, number two in rushing, and you see this right here is why. It's, uh, you get DuBose uh, from Nebraska, you get that kind of blocking, this kind of speed, and the result is touchdown. As long as they can run the ball that well, Greg, get Montana healthy, keep Rice healthy, they're going to be tough. Here's a guy whose knee injury his senior season just literally canceled him out of the Nebraska football program. He was not drafted, signed as a free agent in 87 and scores his second touchdown of the year for the 49ers. And we have a man down on the field. We'll check on him when we get back. 2.52 to play here in the fourth quarter. 49ers leading at 47 to 10. San Francisco leading at 47-10, 2.52 to play here in the fourth quarter. And Mike Kofer on to attempt the point after. Kofer's kick again is good. Doug DuBose, the man who went 37 yards to score. The injured player on that play as we left you was Vincey Glenn, who was helped off the field. So with the extra point, the 49ers now have a 48 to 10 lead, and they've put some significant points on the board the last couple of weeks. Yeah, there's no doubt. They scored 37 or 38 last week, and they've got 48 right now with a couple of minutes left, and I think Bill Walsh has to be happy with the team effort, not just the offense, not just defense, but they had turnovers on defense. Uh, Ronnie Lott comes up with a fumble recover, comes up with a big interception on offense. Montana Rice with the big play, and, of course, Roger Craig carrying the load and running. You mentioned the 49ers taking that ball from the shadow of their own goalpost. They took it 90 yards in 11 plays and took almost six minutes off the clock, too. And you see what San Francisco has done on their last seven possessions. They've been able to put points on the board. Pretty consistent. I'll say. Ronnie Lott alongside Joe Montana. And playing good as they are on both sides of the ball, offensively, defensively, the important thing now is to come out of every game as injury-free as possible. Indianapolis, a three-point winner over New England at home. So in the AFC East, the Colts go to 7-6 and six and drop New England to 7-6. and six. Things tightening up there behind the Buffalo Bills. On the kickoff, at the 1, Jamie Holland. 20, penalty marker down. How unusual. <laughs> Ben Dreith is going to have that arm in a sling when we see him at the airport. Have to ice down his throwing arm. Illegal block number 44 in the back, 10 yards. That'll be number 44, Martin Bayless. This is Jack Murphy Stadium where uh, most of the residents have cleared out and taken the early train home. Here in San Diego, Greg Gumbel along with Ken Stabler, and that's the reason why the 49ers have taken complete control and did so early on and lead at 48-10 with 243 to play in the game. San Diego's ninth penalty of the day. They've been penalized 92 yards. Abe Loffenberg is the quarterback on in relief from Mark Malone. And so they begin at the 10-yard line as the 49ers did on their last drive. set up a screen, completes it at the five, and is thrown for a loss, Lionel James. Bill Romanowski, the rookie outside linebacker from Boston College, made the stop. Let's continue on down the CBS Sports Wire. Pittsburgh, a 16-10 winner over the Chiefs at Three River Stadium. And going without a huddle now are the Chargers. Rothenberg to Bernstein. And they get it back to the 10-yard line. Michael Walter, Greg Cox, immediately surrounding it. And we wind our way down to the two-minute warning. Clock stops. Two minutes left to play here at Jack Murphy Stadium. 49ers still lead. <laughs> Coming up tonight on CBS, when 4,000 American bankers go to Hawaii, can 60 minutes be far behind? What were they doing there? Find out on 60 Minutes. And that's followed by... Later. Zero. And then CBS special movie, the season premiere, Almost Grown. All of that coming up tonight on CBS. Two minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. 49ers lead 48 to 10. Cloth 
Rosenberg out of the shotgun. Far side, complete, incomplete. Out of bounds. Quinn Early trying for the reception. A minute 54 to play. Let's check in with Brent Musburger once again in New York. Brent. Well, Greg, the Kansas City Chiefs were beaten today by the Pittsburgh Steelers. It was 16-10, and the Chiefs played without their leading rusher, Paul Palmer. He was suspended for violating a team rule. I don't know when I found out today. I really, I really have no comment on the matter. So far, the Chiefs have not commented as to why he was suspended, nor whether or not he'd be allowed to play next week. Now let's send you back to Greg. Thank you, Brent. John Taylor takes his punt at the 35. 45, close to midfield. And one of the Chargers comes up screaming he was illegally blocked. Be that as it may, timeout. We'll be back right after this. Now, what about the Stanton judgment? Welcome back. First down from the 49. And this is Doug DuBose, fresh off of his touchdown run last time the 49ers had the ball. And he slides down just across midfield at the San Diego 49. The important thing there is the fact that he did slide down on purpose to stop the clock. I mean, to keep the clock running, you want to go ahead and run this thing out and get off the field and uh, keep injuries, like I said earlier, to a minimum. Just let that clock spin. Pittsburgh over Kansas City, 16-10 this afternoon. And Denver about to wrap one up over the Rams, 35 to 24. That is a fourth quarter score. 49ers have second and eight. And Young will give it to Sydney. Sydney across the 45 to about the 43. Let's check out the standings in the Western divisions of both the AFC and the NFC. The AFC West, Denver will go to seven and six with the win. San Diego about to drop to four and nine in the NFC West. New Orleans plays tonight. San Francisco will be fully behind the New York Giants in that game. And the Rams will drop to seven and six. Atlanta already lost this afternoon. Clock continues to run and we're under 20 seconds now. You know what this is. Oh, this is the favorite play. I used to love to run this play. We called it win the game. We would just stand in the huddle and say win the game on one, win the game on two. All you do is take the ball from center, kneel down, and the game's all over. That was my favorite. Did not take up the bulk of practice, did it? No. 49ers win it. 48 to 10 is the final score. Timeout here.